Good evening, Dennis. Um, as soon as you see everybody's faces in the meeting, I think we're good to go. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. One, two, three, four, five. Patrick. Mr. Chair. A.D. Fernandez, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. We're looking good here. I think and so. Looking great. Okay. Here we go. Good evening, friends and neighbors. I would like to call to order the Malibu Planning Commission regular Good. meeting of today's date, February 6th, 2023. This meeting is being held by teleconference due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Pandemic. <laughs> Commissioners and city staff are participating in this Zoom meeting from remote locations. All votes will be taken by roll call. Members of the public can participate in the meeting or watch it by going to malibucity.org slash virtual meeting. At that screen, click on one of the two tabs to either watch or to sign up to speak on particular items. Those wishing to speak must present in the Zoom meeting, must be present in the Zoom meeting to be recognized. Please sign up before the item has been called by the chair. Those wishing to defer time to someone else intending to speak are not required to sign up, but must be present in the meeting. If instead of speaking, you wish to donate your time to another speaker, please click, click the raise hand button at the bottom of the Zoom screen when the public hearing for the item is open. The speaker may accept up to five additional minutes, one minute each for each speaker that defers time for a maximum total of eight minutes. Alex, would you please show the slide? I'm guessing we have Alex tonight. We do. I think most everyone knows, but our majority public needs to know. Commissioners, when you have comments, please raise your hand and I will call on you in turn so we can make, there we go, so we can make our decision clear for the record and the public. Very good. Thank you, Alex. Uh, may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Hill. Here. Commissioner Jennings. Here. Commissioner Peake. Here. Vice Chair Mazza. Here. Chair Smith. Here. You have a quorum. Wonderful. May I have a report on the posting of the agenda, please? The agenda for this meeting was properly posted on January 27th, 2023. Uh, we don't have anybody celebrating anything tonight, I don't think. Got to approve, got to approve the approve. agenda, Dennis. I've got to approve the agenda. I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda with item 5A, continue to a date uncertain. I'll second it. Um, my apologies. Uh, I just wanted to uh, point out that the applicant is requesting for the item to be continued uh, 30 days from today. So um, they're requesting for the item to be scheduled for the March 6th. Um, so I'm suggesting that as a, um, something for you to consider. I will, um, the, uh, I will amend the motion to March 6th. I'll accept that. Okay. Um, Roll call. Okay, Commissioner. I'm sorry, I was losing track there. I was I was thinking that we were shooting for March 20th for that because of the deadline for noticing. If he's basing his request for continuance on changing anything in his description, you guys tell us what to do. Um. So we would like to, I think um, March 6th would be perfect, um, okay. uh, assuming no changes, because that's a, a item that would be continued to a date certain. Um, okay. Provided that uh, for whatever reason we have to change and then we'll have to re-notice anyway, so it wouldn't matter. Um, we'll we'll change the, the hearing date at that point. Okay, great. Um, Vice Chair Mazza. Yes. Chair Jennings. I'm sorry, Commissioner Jennings. Yes. Commissioner Hill. Yes. Commissioner Peak. Yes. Chair Smith. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, that was our only chance. Did we? Did anybody want to think about four A going or five D coming up to four A? 
because yeah. we had heard that not that long ago. Um, I know um, Rebecca wrote the letter, but I thought this might be one we want to get out, or well, I guess not. I think we'll have enough time for all of them tonight. Wow. Okay. All right. Um, you posting in general no. Those written in oral communication from the public, communication from the public concerning matters which are not on the agenda, but for which the Planning Commission has subject matter jurisdiction. The Commission may not act on these matters except to refer the matters to staff or schedule the matters for a future agenda. Rebecca, do we have any public speakers? No one has signed up in advance of the meeting to speak. If you are present in the meeting and wish to speak on matters that are not currently on the agenda, please click the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen now. And seeing none. It looks like we, um, never mind. Okay, planning commission and staff comments and inquiries. Any of you find people missed uh, Commissioner Hill? Oh, there we go. Hi, good evening, everybody. I've um, got a couple comments, a couple questions for staff that I guess they could answer after I'd finished. Um, I thought, uh, well, I, I'm wondering if we're scheduled for a tour of the new college and sheriff station. And relatedly, um, there's been a lot more racing on PCH after midnight lately. And I'm hearing stuff from neighbors. They're losing sleep. They're anxious about it. So I'm sort of curious if we can get an answer about whether having the substation out here is going to change that in any way. And maybe this is something to flag for the sheriff to bring back at the next council meeting. Um, also, remind me, it was either the commission or the council imposed a condition that we would all take a technical field trip of the gas stations prior to hearing any of them so that we could all look at the lighting and, and you know, have a... a non-Brown Act violating meeting uh, under those uh, fluorescent lights or whatever they are nowadays. Um, so I thought that was going to happen. Um, the one I, I want to say, I drove by the one at Chevron at Webb Way uh, last night, and I thought it actually looked pretty good. The temperatures are warmer. It's not overly bright. And I thought if that's the one that's been done in town, if that's the one that the Point Doom applicant is wanting to look at, they should maybe understand that that is probably the brightest intersection in town with respect to the ambient light. So just copying the wattage ratings of the individual fixtures or, or whatever the plan there is at Chevron and trying to apply them to another location may or may not achieve the result desired. Um, let's see, I, I might have said this in the past, but if I did, it bears repeating that. Could we please have the draft resolution in our packets identified as a draft? labeled draft on its face uh, and described as a draft in the agenda. That way the public can understand it's not a done deal. Um, too often people look at a report and assume it's a done deal, especially if they're not experts. And I guess finally, there was on the 27th, a five hour workshop at the Coastal Commission on neighborhood scale adaptation planning for sea level rise in California. I was not able to participate in that or even watch it yet, but I did track down the video link to that Zoom meeting and I sent it to the planning staff today. And so hopefully um, if anybody wants to look at that Coastal Commission meeting on sea level rise adaptation, neighborhood scale, um, they will have the link where you can email me and I can send you the link. And that's it for my comments and questions. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Maza. Oh, um, a couple of minor things. One, uh, <clears throat> I'm wondering if there's going to be any training of the new commissioner, any uh, Brown Act training of us, uh, any manuals or any ethics training planned in the future for the Planning Commission. And um, the second thing I want to get confirmed is that the we are going to stay on Zoom until the city council says we aren't. Is that correct, the way it stands now? The, the March 27th, is that that week or whatever that is? Somewhere in there? I, I think they did not set a date. 
but I'm staff would know, I guess. So yeah, at the last city council meeting, um, the city council uh, discussed uh, trying a, a pilot um, uh, meeting where they would have in person slash uh, virtual meetings uh, for city council meetings only. Uh, they expect all other commissions and boards to um, continue on with their virtual meetings uh, for now. Uh, we will uh, wait to hear from them if that changes uh, in the future. Yes. Yeah, can I just, I, I, I've watched those meetings. I, I'd be happy with that. That sounds fine. But I, it seemed like they were saying for council and planning commission and the others would be different, but whatever. I, I'm just. They changed their mind at the last minute. At the last minute. All right. Maybe I didn't see that part. I, I think yeah. it was all about making the hybrid thing work. I think that's whatever yeah. our staff is able to do to make that work. I think that's kind of the deciding factor here. Yeah. I thought we were on board with that too, but. Well, I'm, I'm, yeah. I, you know. Um, where, wherever that takes us. I'm happy to get back in the building when everybody's ready. Look, there's Commissioner Peak smiling. Um, have you got anything, Mr. Mr. Peak? No, I just, I, I think it's better for the community to have the meetings in person, but that's, uh, that's my two cents and we'll do that whenever they want us to. Yeah, 10 four. Um, okay, we're missing, we're missing, we're missing Commissioner Jennings. I don't see his name. I don't even see him, let alone his name. He's not on page two here. Rebecca, uh, while we wait for Commissioner Jennings to rejoin the meeting, um, I did want to confirm that based on the actions, the Planning Commission, as well as all other commissions, will be meeting virtually until that we hear otherwise from city council. It does require a greater number of staff members in order to conduct a hybrid meeting. So I think they wanna uh, weigh the consequences of the decisions and see how well it works before they bring other commissions forward with that. Yeah, that's, that's what I understood. Makes sense. And Alex, if you could reach out to Commissioner Jennings to see if he's experiencing technical issues. Can you send me a phone number? Like email me? Yeah, I'll email that to you again. Thanks. We have a great group of people watching us tonight. Look at this. Wonderful. Thank you for taking your Monday night off and having a great time watching us. Yes, absolutely. So uh, Jeff just messaged me back that the internet at the office died. And if he can't get it back up and running, he's gonna go home and rejoin the meeting. So maybe we want to continue on, or I don't know what you guys want to do. Maybe you want to do it, take a 10 minute recess. I don't know, whatever your call is. We have a quorum. Is there some, is there some quick bit of business that, I don't know, I guess not. We're Consent, unless somebody's pulling the consent calendar, is there something on that? Well, it looks like he's coming back on. There he is. There you are. That was weird. <laughs> that was the trip. Yeah. One of those Russian balloons went over. <laughs> How do we know it, you're the real Jeff Jennings? That's yeah, the deep fake. <laughs> the deep fake. Um, okay, we were doing commissioner's comments. Do you have any, sir? Me no, and neither do I. So that takes us to the consent calendar, and we don't think I don't think we have anything here. Previously discussed items, none, and we come to three B, 
Uh, one, new items, de minimis waiver, application for a new on-site wastewater treatment system for Wilsey Fire affected parcel. We, this is a receive and file. Are we okay with that? I move and receive and file 3B1, 3B2, and 3B3. Wonderful. I'll second that. Well, see, yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't require a motion. We just move on and it's there. We That's correct. File. Yep. Commissioner Jennings is correct. There's no need for a formal motion to receive and file. It would only be if there was a motion to bring it back as a full CDP. So we can move on to 5A, Chair Smith. Or we will do, we will do just that. Um, no, we'll go on to 5B. Right. Um, Coastal Development Permit number 17-104, variance number 19-035, site plan review number 23-003, minor modification number 20 or 20-012, and an offer to dedicate number 23-001, an application for a new single family residence and exterior site improvements. And we have our senior planner, uh, Jessica. Uh, well, day TV as she's being called these days, I believe. But uh, here we go. See, we have a staff report. Mr. Chairman? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I believe this is a continued item. Uh, so I believe that unless Skyler's reviewed all the prior material, he's got to recuse himself. Well, Mr. Donegan, I guess I'll let you answer that question. To rely on uh, Adrian, Adrian, is it is it continued? It's listed as a new public hearing on the agenda. It, it is a new uh, public hearing. However, this item has been um, a similar item um, or the same project, I should say, but uh, a, a different. Um, same application, different project um, was presented before the planning commission uh, a few years back. And then uh, that item was appealed to the city council um, and now is, is back uh, at the planning commission meeting. So um, I'm not, while it is a different project, it is um, again, decisions on the, on this application have been made in the past. And uh, I, I just want to, point out that this was sent to us by the city council as the same item. So uh, it would be a continued hearing. Yeah, city council remanded this uh, back to the planning commission. That, my, that is not the, the same as a continued public hearing, i.e. a continued public hearing is that there is, you know, public testimony, the planning commission then directs staff to continue it. And that, and and so, if is as I'm understanding it, this item came before the planning commission. There was an action of some kind. It was then matriculated its way up to the city council, who then remanded it back down. And this is the first time it's been heard since that time. Commissioner P can can participate. There's no he he, he he there's no requirement that he have to familiarize himself with the entirety of the project from years and years back. Uh, question. I, I'm not trying to get rid of uh, Skylar. I'm just trying to get this straight. Um, when the city council remands back a project, uh, aren't they remanding back the project before them? And uh, wouldn't a new project be improper? <clears throat> and have to have a new CDP? So this, the reason they are remanding the item back to you is so that um, uh, it was to give the applicant the opportunity to revise the project and give the planning commission opportunity to look at the project revised from the uh, former project that was uh, first before the planning commission. Pretty straightforward. It, it, is, or, it is or isn't the same CDP number? It is the same CDP number, um, and this has been done on many other projects in the past. So, is oh, what, what, what I think what you may uh, be thinking is that the city council has uh, asked that when a project is uh, decided by the planning commission, that the same project be and, and when an appeal to city council that the same project 
uh, that was reviewed by the Planning Commission is what uh, is then reviewed by City Council and that there are no revisions at that at that time. However, this, there's been uh, a number of projects in the past, same application, where they go to the City Council and City Council uh, remands those projects back to the Commission. Uh, and the only reason they would do that is to allow the applicant the opportunity to revise and the planning commission, the opportunity to then look at the revised, you know, a, a revised version of the project. Is that correct, uh, Patrick? Once again, the the way that staff maintains the, 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 the same CDP number to me is not necessarily dispositive. You are correct if the city council said, hey, we like it just the way this is. We're going to remand back down for a specific issue that we think that wasn't fully fleshed out. My reading of the staff report, my reading of the agenda is that this project stands kind of on its own merits before you all tonight. There is no you know, explicit direction from the city council only to look at a part of it. The entirety of the project is before is before this body, and therefore it is in essence as listed under the agenda, a, a new public hearing. Thus, you know, Commissioner Peak, as well as all the other commissioners here tonight, can can, can participate. Okie doke, you're the boss. Okay. We, all right. Good. All right, Jessica. Yeah. Uh, good evening, Chair Smith and members of the Planning Commission. The item you have before you tonight is located at 3620 Noranda Lane for Coastal Development Permit number 17104, inclusive of variance 1935, SPR number 23003, and minor modification number 20012. Next slide, please. Uh, I will provide a brief project chronology, um, sort of what we were just getting into. Uh, in April of 2021, the Planning Commission adopted Resolution 2130, denying coastal development permit number 17104. Um, that following April 26, the applicant of Vitas Monterey filed an appeal of the Planning Commission decision in denial of the project. In July 12, 2021, the City Council remanded the CDP 17104 back to the Planning Commission. And on August 3, 2021, the applicant submitted revised plans including a reduced footprint of the single family residence and an updated biological assessment. In August of 2020, August 24th of 2022, the revised project was reviewed by the ERB. Next slide, please. Pictured here is a vicinity map and aerial photograph of the project site. Um, the project site is located entirely within environmentally sensitive habitat area and it is located on the north side of Noranda Lane in a rural residential five acre zoning district. The subject site is bordered to the north by vacant land outside of the city's boundary, to the east by a vacant lot, and to the west and south by single residential development. As mentioned, the proposed development is located entirely within ESHA and a variance has been requested for construction within ESHA and the development area is limited to 10,000 square feet and totals a development area of 7,345 square feet. Additionally, the proposed development is subject to hillside residential development standards. And as such, the maximum total development square footage is reduced by 25%. And the maximum height limit is measured from 35 feet. The proposed development measures 32 feet in height and has a proposed total development of square footage of 5,189 square feet, which complies with the Hillside Residential Development Standards. Next slide, please. The project description includes a 4,789 square foot single family residence with a 1,801 square foot basement and subterranean garage for a total development square footage of 5,189 square feet, a new on-site wastewater treatment system, a new swimming pool, spa, and equipment, new decks, new landscaping, a new 25,000 gallon and 5,000 gallon underground water tank, 581 cubic yards of non-exempt grading, 
an offer to dedicate a trail easement and also inclusive of the following discretionary request, a variance for encroachment into ESHA, a site plan review for construction on slope steeper than three to one, but flatter than two and a half to one, and a minor modification to reduce the front yard setback by 50%. Next slide, please. Picture here is the site plan for the project showing the single family residence and associated development. Next slide, please. This slide demonstrates the project's proposed development area. As mentioned, the property is located entirely within ESHA and a variance is required. Per LIPs, chapter 4.7, it is limited to 10,000 square foot development area and the development area measures 7,345 square feet. Next slide, please. Pictured here is a floor plan for the basement, which totals 1,801 square feet. Next slide, please. Pictured here is the lower level plan, which includes the primary suite, two additional bedrooms, associated bathrooms, and laundry room for a total of 2,739 square feet. Next slide, please. Pictured here is the upper level floor plan, which includes the living room, the kitchen and dining room for a total of 2,050 square feet. Next slide, please. Here are the elevations for the proposed development. On the top portion of the slide is the north elevation. And on the bottom portion of the slide pictures the south elevation of the property. The proposed residence does not exceed 32 feet in height and is compliant with hillside residential development standards. Next slide, please. Here are the proposed project elevations continued. Pictured on the top portion is the east elevation. And on the bottom portion of the side shows the west elevation. Next slide, please. As mentioned earlier in the presentation, the application was redesigned to be presented to the commission. Picture here shows the prior design rendering on the left and on the right, the current proposed rendering. Next slide, please. On the left shows the prior design footprint, and on the right shows the current proposal footprint. Next slide, please. Here's a breakdown comparison uh, between the previously proposed project and the current project. It should be noted that the residence has reduced the TDSF from 6,082 square feet to 5,109, excuse me, 89 square feet reducing it by a total of 893 square feet. The project has reduced its development area by 1,912 square feet. Next slide, please. Here are story pool photographs of the project site. Um, next slide, please. And pictured here again are more story pool photos um, on the lower right-hand corner um, shows the project site um, as visible, minimally visible from Ensignal Canyon. Next slide, please. Um, in summary, staff recommends the approval of Coastal Development Permit number 17104 and adopting resolution number 2302. That concludes staff's presentation. Um, staff and the applicant team are available for any questions. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, disclosures. 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 Oh, Vice Chair Mazza. Uh, I visited the property on, uh, in, I guess, 2020 when it was first heard. Uh, I haven't visited it since. Commissioner Hill? Uh, I did go back and visit it again. Uh, I can say that 
from one part of Encinal, it, it has been improved. When you look up, there's a little bit less of the skyline uh, being blocked with respect to the primary ridgeline issue. When you wrap around an Encinal back behind it, uh, before you get to Charmley Park, though, it's still substantially blocking view water, view, blue water view, similar to what it was doing before. Uh, but more on that later. Commissioner Peak. I have none. Commissioner Jennings. You're, you're muted. Sorry, I went to the property, uh, just like uh, Commissioner Maza, I went to the property the last time it was before us. I have not been back. And I met uh, Mr. Marta out there uh, this week and just re-looked over the story poles and what was there and uh, realized it's a little bit smaller and that was it. So, okay, uh, public comment. Yes, for the applicant team, we have Vetus, um, and following him, we will have a, a member of the public who has signed up in advance to speak, Neil Popowitz, and then um, Vetus will return for rebuttal if he chooses to. If there's anyone else present in the meeting who wishes to speak on the item uh, while Vetus is speaking, please go ahead and click the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. We'll circle back to you later. Good evening, commissioners, planning staff friends and neighbors. Uh, this is indeed a different version of the house than what was seen previously. The footprint has been reduced and pulled away from the steeper slopes. And we have eliminated the vast majority of the superstructure of the house, that which was up on top of the point. We've gotten rid of all eaves, gotten rid of a big chunk of the square footage on that upper level. And um, basically what you see as you drive up Naranda or as you drive up Encinal is far less than what you see uh, saw in the prior design. Uh, this also results in uh, a net reduction of the grading that's required to build the residence. The project was approved with just a 100 foot fuel modification. That was improved by both the fire department and forestry and it's based on topography and of course the mode of construction up there. And one other thing that we did notice at the very end was uh, we, we had the surveyor go back out as a lot of the rock material that was present, which was dumped there as man-made stuff that was broken out, had slid down the hill during the uh, Woolsey fire and had changed the contours a bit uh, in part of that path. So those rocks, I guess, safely arrived at the bottom of the canyon. This requires a lot less construction up there, and it's just a, a gift from Mother Nature. But other than that, uh, it's pretty much a straight-ahead uh, designed for up there. We re are asking for the uh, minor modification, reduction of the front yard setback, so that we impact less ESHA. And um, other than that, there's really no special consideration here. It is a site plan review uh, just due to the slopes that are present on the site. We have picked the flattest area, that area which was previously disturbed by grading. I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Great. Thank you, sir. Um, commissioners? And I'm sorry, we also have um, a member of the public that would like to speak. Oh. Um, so next would be Neil Popowitz. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh, I'm here on behalf of the neighbors uh, asking the, the uh, commission to uh, reject this project. Um, I want to, I, I did submit a letter uh, on Friday uh, that goes into some detail, so I don't want to belabor those points too much, but I do want to remind uh, the commission that uh, two years ago, they rejected this unanimously, uh, finding essentially that there is a, you know, there is a previously approved building pad, which it could, could accommodate a smaller residence. And uh, I don't think that's what we're seeing here. I mean, yes, it's smaller, but it's not, frankly, small enough. Uh, the um, Coastal Commission back in 86 gave uh, a permit to build a, uh, a size, a unit uh, that was, well, was a, a house and a, uh, and a guest house that would total somewhere around 3,500 square feet. Uh, this is essentially double that. Um, the, uh, uh, Mr. Matari's letter of April, 2021 made a number of promises as to what he was going to do. I don't feel that those have been fulfilled. 
Uh, he was, he said he was going to re redesign the, uh, the residence to occupy, to, to be limited to the purported pre-existing home and guest house. He was going to, there was going to be no construction or grading on slopes greater than one to one. He, uh, was going to uh, reduce the square footage of the building by 20%. Uh, he, you know, he, he the, 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 that's not what's happening here. Um, yeah, I have it here. So the, in 1986, the Coastal Commission called for a construction of a, of a residence 2,517 feet and a 1,076 square foot guest house. So, you know, 30 year, 35 years ago, they were going to build something that was approximately 3,000, you know, 3,500 feet. And now they're asking for a much bigger property. I don't think that's appropriate. Um, we have, uh, the neighbors have some serious concerns. They would remind the, uh, the commission that Naranda Lane is the only way in and out of, of this hillside. Uh, they're very concerned about the shortened front yard. Uh, you know, the point of having the, the longer uh, setback is to allow for parking, allow enough you know, su a sufficient space for a number of cars. Uh, if the folks who move into this house end up having, uh, heck, they have a Super Bowl party, where are these cars going to go? There's not going to be a place for them. Uh, they can't block this road. It is a serious fire hazard. Um, Thank you, Mr. Popowitz. And you are at time. Oh. And then, uh, Vitas, would you care to provide any rebuttal to his comments? Uh, I would just like to point out that one of the goals of the redesign was to lessen the visual impact, not reposition the house. Uh, we did reduce the square footage, but if you, uh, I don't think it's worth it to go back and look, but some of you may recall that there was a unique roof shape that was the key to the whole design. We've eliminated that and just left two little flat roof uh, chambers on top of this thing. Everything else is pulled back from the slopes as was requested by certain commissioners at the prior hearing. So I do believe we've uh, complied as much as we felt was was reasonable. And I do think it's a reasonable project. There's nowhere else on the site to build a house. That's all I have. I'm available for questions. Thank you. And that does conclude public comment. Thank you. Uh, back to us, uh, Commissioner Hill, your hand is up. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I think they've made some progress. I still do have some questions and concerns. And so for staff, sort of basically two questions here. One is probably pretty easy. How much further from the steep slope on the north side is the new design compared to the last design? Because I went up and I looked at the story poles and I, you know, I didn't have a one-to-one -one comparison of what it had been prior, but it still seemed quite close to that really steep edge there. Um, they just represented that they've moved it back substantially, but it felt about the same. So that's one question. Maybe while you're looking, maybe, maybe Jessica might have that, and Adrian, you could answer a bigger question. Um, what, how do we treat the concept of one story with respect to LIP 6, the well, hillside ordinance, LIP 6.5.C1B, which provides a hard limit of one story in these circumstances, where specifically, quoting, where the only feasible building site would result in unavoidable adverse impacts to environmentally sensitive habitat areas, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Any structures approved on such a building site shall be limited to one story in height. And I'm, I'm not sure, I, there's sort of a couple of questions about the stories here. One being that it resembles in some respects the case we just recently looked at on Horizon where the you, from the street you could see the garage with another story stacked above it and then in this case we have yet another story so functionally this is three stories it just depends what we call them um and i understand that we're calling the bottom level uh, a basement but it's not just storage space it's habitable space they've got a theater in there and a sauna and a bathroom and a, a steam room and we've got the elevator so um, 
and th and that daylights because the garage is on visible from the street. So I, I'm just that's part of the question. Do we are we just we don't count that bottom floor because it's a basement? And then secondly, how would it be only one story if the two upper floors overlap at least in the area of the staircase? They have they have by definition they're they're, they're stacked on top of each other. So I'm just uh, the question is what are the precedents? Do we? Um, it feels like three stories to me functionally. It can only be one story. There's how often have we bent the uh, definition at least this far? Um, what, what's the section you quoted? Um, uh, LIP six point five C one B. It's the ridge hillside development ridge lines. Got it. And we, we we do have an acknowledgement in the past, at least two hearings ago, Vetus conceded it was at least a secondary ridge line. I don't think that's in, in contention. Uh, and that was part of what why we we well, to be clear, in the last hearing we did dis we discussed the ridge line. There was some concern about it, but that was sort of dicta when we came to the decision because uh a lot of us felt like it was there was a primary ridge line issue, but David Wilde didn't want to go there. So, uh, but nonetheless, where no feasible building, where, where the only feasible building site would result in unavoidable adverse impacts to ESHA, then any structure approved on that building site shall be limited to one story in height. So, um... I guess to, to answer your very first question about the basement. So the code uh, specifically says that a basement um, is not counted as a story. Um, and so it doesn't um, count as a, as a floor. Um, Does, it doesn't matter if it's habitable or not. The, the habitability is irrelevant. It, it is correct. Okay. Um, and that's, it's never been, um, it's never been applied differently, whether it's non-habitable or habitable space. Um, in, in this particular case, it is, you know, a subterranean garage, which, uh, like you said, obviously the opening of the garage does add to uh, the potential massing of the building. But, you know, the code does allow, again, for a subterranean garage or basement underneath a house, and that space does not count as a, as a level or, or floor. Um, it's just the basement. And so um, now regarding the stairs, um, we've had uh, projects where, you know, you, you have to share stairs or an elevator uh, for, you know, various reasons. And, um, you know, we've only, uh, we've, we've counted the stairs when they're going into two different levels once uh, only. And so we count that as part of the first floor square footage, and we do not count it as Part of the second floor, um, and uh, we don't count that again as a as a as a two level space since you know the stairs only have essentially one floor. Um, that makes that makes sense. Although on the plan, he does have the square footage numbers calculated using half attributing half of the area of the stairwell to the upper floor and half to the lower. So that and, that would then throw and, off the numbers. It's it's been done that way. Unfortunately, uh, we we. We try to avoid that because it, it makes it confusing. That's that's yeah. Um, on on top of that, uh, what makes it even more confusing is the fact that we calculate um, the stairs based on TDSF, and again, we only count that space as one uh, for two level uh, house um, or multi level or split level, however you want to call it, and then. Um, you know the the area uh, over 18 feet is counted as part of two thirds. So while the space above the stairs is not counted for TDSF, it is counted as part of uh, two thirds, which sometimes those calculations are confusing to some people. And so uh, sometimes, like I said, they will add half of that space in the first floor and half of the second floor, and that's very close to two thirds. The calculation still works. And it's um, 
you know, um, but it makes things very confusing. So the idea is, again, you only count it on the first floor. However, we've seen it where, uh, you know, a, a planner may not necessarily catch the fact that an architect may be counted half and half. Um, and that has happened in the past, but ideally we don't like seeing that. Okay, to, to, to put a bow on that question, you're, you, you are saying that what appears to be three stories from the street is legally one story. Well, and we, we've, we've had houses where, in this, this case is three, we've had houses where there are five or six different levels uh, from the street, and that's because the house cascades up or down right. um, depending on the topography, but provided that the spaces are not uh, stacked up on top of each other, We've allowed those split levels. In fact, uh, in that uh, chapter that you were reading, there's a section in there that um, encourages uh, split level designs because it reduces grading, and obviously, um, some visual impacts in some cases. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yes. Okay, good. Um, and then just, uh, I have another concern, um, but I'll just mention... Mr. Popowitz said that Vetus had said he would reduce it by 20%. When you look at just the TDS number specifically, the reduction has been 16%. So take take that for what you will. Um, my bigger concern is on the, um, the ridgeline impacts. Um, it's been stipulated this is a ridgeline. It is better from looking at when you look at from the first opportunity to see it from Encinal Canyon Road down below. It's about 1,000 feet away. It's definitely better from there. When, however, when the road wraps around to the backside, so you're looking out before you get to Charmley, you're looking out uh, over this 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 prominence, this promontory sort of sticks out into what is the valley of Encinal Canyon there, and it's kind of right up in the front, and it occupies a lot of the ocean view, and this is just kind of sitting up on top of there like a cherry on top of that, and. Yes, it's far away. It's about 2,800 feet, so a bit over half a mile away, but it's clearly blocking the ocean view. And in the primary ridge line, some of the language talks about view blockages against um, other mountains, other topography having to be at least 500 feet away to qualify. Um, and so I don't know that the fact that it's 2,800 feet is necessarily like to say just categorically, oh, that's too far away to count. And if it is, uh, it does the same thing from Charmley Park about a thousand feet away. So if it's got to be at least 500 feet away to be a problem and here, this is a thousand feet. That seems like that's, um, again, what we talked about in the last meeting is that it needs to be brought down off the top of the ridge by the statutory hundred feet and they could do something very similar to what they've proposed here, but just tucking the whole thing down, you know, whatever it takes, 20 feet lower. So um, I guess I still have that one question out standing here about how, how much further away are we from that really steep slope? That, that I do have. So that's a, about approximately seven feet. And so it's, it's seven feet away from it now or seven feet further? Further, so further how, from the slope. So how far from it is it now? Oh, let me get that. I mean, it's it's still, it looks when you're up there standing on it, it looks pretty close. Like, you know, if your drunk buddies went around the backside of the house, you'd be worried. <laughs> yeah. Don't let them go. <laughs> Put a lock on the gate. Or so the fact, the fact that it probably has moved in some, is that, what is it you're worried about there, Commissioner Hill? I'm, I'm just, it, part, it plays into the whole question of, you know, we asked him to adjust this for a variety of reasons, and, and most specifically to comply with the building on slopes and the amount of the ESHA impact. That those are the two variances that we most specifically had issue with. And my general sense is here, yeah, they've improved it, but haven't they just haven't gone far enough so you know that that was one of the slopes that was a real concern and especially in terms of fire safety and hazard that slope is a chimney 
um, you know, any fire on that is going to just become come rushing up. So if it might make a big difference if this was, you know, I don't know what it is now, about 10 feet away versus if it could be, you know, 20, 30 feet away, that might be a big difference. Uh, I did confirm it's approximately 12 feet. Yeah. So again, it would, that too would be helped if the whole project was just notched down the hill. Like you could keep the second story where you have the sec the middle story now, that could be the top story. And you could then, you know, do basically the same general concept with the topography and just shift it down one story down the slope. And that would solve the view line, the, the view ridge issue and uh, make it more fire safe. So I'll, I'll leave my comment there for the moment. Yeah, uh, Commissioner Mazza. I'd like to continue on that a little because I see nothing in these drawings that show that. Um, if you look at the very last sheet we got, which is the color-coded slope analysis, we have two to one to one to one, basically touching the corner of the building. It can't be 12 feet. Uh, and that's on the north side. It's just a cliff. And it's not even a, a it's a steep cliff. And anybody who's been around Malvin knows that there'll be a chimney of fire coming up there at least 100 feet tall when it comes that's down. That, that fire will be everywhere. It isn't just going to aim at this house, that's for sure. And it's going to aim at houses that are on cliffs that are right up next to them, okay? You have a chance if your house is on flat property. But here you have a cliff that comes right up to the house, and then the blue, which is less, is a tiny amount of space, tiny amount of space. So what, what the applicant is saying is, oh, I got the fire department not to let me not to make me cut some trees down. Meanwhile, that's the fuel that's going to burn your house down. Now, the thing I'm missing here also is I see no fire walk around anywhere on the plants. In fact, I see elevations that show that there can't be. If you look at the um, if you look at the plans that show the uh, elevations, which is Give you the number of it. You're saying there's no five foot. You're saying there's no five foot condition around the house. Is that what you're saying? I don't see it. And if you look at A34, it is literally impossible because there's giant rocks piled up against the house. You can't crawl over those with a fire hose on the uh, west elevation on A34. Uh, you don't see it on any of the um, any of the elevations from above, you look at A35, and you can see that there's no way around, for example, the south left corner. It's right up against a cliff. It's the rocks go right up the side of the wall. Well, you have to have a five foot. If you're going to have a firestorm come through, you at least have to be able to get a hose over there. Uh, same as the top view on number five. Same as numbers eight. None of them. Seems that, seems that we don't have the stamped fire plan here in front of us. Um, well, these are the plans we're presented. Okay, we're presented these. Now, that makes... Just alone, the fact that you could have a what's essentially, I think, a 400-foot cliff covered with fuel, lit on fire in a canyon with the wind blowing, and you don't even have a walk around, and you're giving a setback that is supposedly 12 feet, but it looks like it's about three on the elevation, with no walk around, you, what you're creating is to use a better word, not, not knowing a better word, a death trap, okay? Okay, let's, uh, let's, let's, and, let's, and, and Mazza, let's do something here. Let's ask, let's ask Mr. Monterey about that. Uh, Vetus, can you help us with that, please? 
And, and maybe we want to look at the photograph of the story polls that shows, maybe we can tell something from that, uh, Jessica. Can we bring Vita in? Uh, uh, we did present a five foot uh, wide clear to the sky walk around to all the major chambers in the house to the Fire Prevention Bureau and they approved that plan. That plan matches the architectural plan that you have before you. Um, you can't walk all the way around the house in one loop, but 150 feet of fire hose can be brought into all the uh, habitable chambers of the house. The swimming pool, I uh, know you won't be able to get to that any way to uh, extinguish that. The rocks similarly don't need to be protected and the concrete decks don't need to be protected, but you can walk to every opening of the house five feet wide, clear to the sky. That was part of the reason why we uh, got rid of the concrete walkway that we initially had along that north slope. You can actually walk along grade now, it's 12 feet wide. Well, I, can you show us which plan that sh that's shown on? Uh, it's only shown on the fire department plan. That's not included in my uh, set for the CDP, but we have. Wow. So it's not an, it's not in evidence. Well, the plans would not be before you if we did not have our referral sheet from the Fire Prevention Bureau. And what they look at is the water supply, the mode of construction, and most importantly, the fire access for both the truck, the hose that's on the truck, and the walk around. So that plan, I've never included that in my CDP presentation, but the CDP presentation would not come before the Planning Commission unless the referral sheet had been issued by the Fire Prevention Bureau. Well, I don't, I, I tend to respect architects, but I, unless it's on paper, I can't vote for it. Um, uh, I'm sorry, Jenna. Vitas, would you be able to email me that plan and I can put it up on a slide so we can see if you have the stamp plan? Okay. I'm not at the right computer, but I'll try to do that right now. Okay. Um, now, so Vice Chair Maza, the other 500 homes you've ever looked at on this commission and you, and you, either agreed or disagreed here and they didn't have the fire plan in them because they don't and all of a sudden this is a problem i think mr jennings would say that we do get the fire plan we, we do, do. Get walk around on our plans we i've do. seen hundreds of them to say that they don't exist is not true okay uh now one of my so so that's a big factor because the neighbor mentioned and you've been up there that that's a really shaky road, okay? It's not 24 feet wide. It has no place to park on it. You've got other houses up there. You have to have fire trucks go up what I consider 20% slopes. I haven't measured them. And, and there is a turnaround, but there isn't room to be parking on the street and dragging hoses around two different sides of the house. Uh, or different sections. I don't know how many. Most houses in every requirement I've ever seen says you got the fire department has to have a five foot walk around, not walk to. Okay. Uh, now, one of the other things I'll bring up while we're waiting is, and this is all shown uh, on this A35. Uh, there's many spots where it's like this. And to say that, oh, there's a rock pile against it, so you don't need to walk over it, there's still a house above it. And uh, now, the other thing I want to look at is it appears on A34 that we've got over a 12 foot basement in the stairway. Because there's no roof on it, it's still part of the basement because it's counted as part of the basement. Uh, but it's over 12 feet. So, so now it's very hard to figure that out because there's very few dimensions on these plans, but you can figure it out. Uh, there's one dimension that shows it, the, 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 what's considered the, I guess, lower floor above the basement is six foot eight to the plate. Okay, so it is over 12 feet. What that, which sheet is that, uh, Commissioner Mazza? A3. I, I, see, I see a nine foot basement. You see D west section, stairway. Wow. Nine, nine feet. Where do you see nine feet? To the left. No, I'm talking about to the whole thing has no roof on it. It's a single room, okay? And it's underground. So is there some sort of planning issue about a 12-foot basement? I'm not yeah, sure. you can't be higher than 12 feet. That's the. Where, where does it say that? 
I thought it was an ordinance. Yeah, it, it is a requirement for basement not to be 12 feet. But if we're looking at uh, sheet A3.4, the, the, the movie room or ci uh, cinema, that space is less than 12. And then to the left of that, those are stairs. So it it gives the appearance that the space is, is over 12 feet, but that's because that's just the staircase. It's just a cross section over that. But that stair, that staircase is underground. It, it, it's a stair, it has no it's ceiling. Stair, the, it's a stair that the, takes people from the basement to the main level. And uh, it has to be roughly 20 feet high. Sure. It's it's just, uh, again, it's a staircase taking them from one level to the next one. But that's not, that's, it doesn't have a, a ceiling that's 12 feet tall. Correct. But it's it's a basement. It doesn't, it's, it's a bay, it's, Part of it is a basement and part of it is a staircase. But again, um, it it there's no uh, floor to ceiling height over 12 feet. Uh, so this would be consistent with the basement requirements based on this cross section. There could be other parts of now, now, Adrian, the basement how can it be, how can it be less this. than 12 feet if there's no roof? The, the, there's a, again, <laughs> This is a cross section. Tennis ball from the top and have it hit the bottom without any roof. You have stairs uh, above you as you're going up the stairs, so it's like a. Um, and those know, stairs cover the whole space. The stairs will be the, you know, it would be above you as you're going up the stairs. There's another fly of stairs above your head. Are they offset? Excuse me. Are they offset? How wide is that room? Right. We can look at three there. If, the, if they're as wide as the stairs or as wide as the room. It's a three-story stairwell. Yeah. Anyway, I just want to point that out. Uh, the other, so there's a, a real reason to worry about not being able to put out a fire, placing the house on a cliff, in a canyon, on a on a one-to-one -one slope with no defensible mechanism to defend it, other than you can walk to certain areas of it with a hose. Uh, and then there's a limitation on vehicle parking when there's upstreet, upstreet houses that will be also have fire engines at them. If there's a fire, and this is the canyon, remember a big canyon, not a little, not a little gully on point two, uh, and it does blow 100 miles an hour up there. So I can't see how reducing the fuel load is making this any safer. And uh, I, uh, as a planning commissioner, I have to make sure our house is safe. Uh, not just that, oh, we could tweak this and tweak that and and uh, not have a fire walk around, not have fuel consumption, not a setback from a cliff. Those things are very, very dangerous because they involve people's health and safety, and they also involve neighbors' health and safety. And if this were a standard road in a, in a non-rural area that could be gotten to by fire trucks, Easily is a big, big difference. This is probably one of the hardest houses I've ever seen to imagine fire suppression. So anyway, those are my questions. Commissioner Hill. I have a few other concerns, but it might be helpful to hear from Skylar to get a sense of the room here and how efficient I need to be about what I have to say next. What, Skyler, what what kind of impressions have you taken so far? Um, well, I think that Vitas clearly stated that he has the fire department walk around approved. So I, that's not something so much as that I take issue with on this. I don't think we would be at this stage if he didn't have that. Um, but I think that John and Craig, I think you guys both bring up a very, very valid concern in 
the fire suppression questions related to this project and the slope at the rear of it. However, we're not the fire department to make that decision, you know, but yes, we do need to make it safe. So, you know, I would say if there was a way to slide this thing down the hill, that would be awesome. Um, you could mitigate the view impacts that are brought up as concern. Um, the homeowner would have a beautiful, nice yard at the back. That's a nice flat area, relatively flat area that otherwise they don't have uh, on the property. But um, that's not what's before us. I think we need to look at the project the way it is before us right now. So I'm, you know, curious to hear what the other comments are. It, can, can I just follow that? Hang on, Commissioner Jennings. Okay. Is there a way to move uh, this project down the hill without intruding further into the Trabesha? I it's, I think that the the whole project, the whole property is Esha. Am I yeah. correct? Is there a part of it that's not as? It, 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 yes, the whole property is, but the um, there's one part of it that's the, not as impact would have less of an impact. Yeah, uh, I, that's I mean that's the way I understood. Yeah. The it's it's flatter and it's closer to the road and and it's not so much on a hillside i'm just wondering whether whether what staff's reaction would be um if you moved it further uh, or required a greater um a fire suppression area by moving it down the hill i mean that's that's a, a great uh point uh commissioner jennings so um per the code um the ESHA impacts are of the most important. Uh, so the protection of ESHA, according to the LCP, comes in as number one. Um, now, provided that the fire department had different requirements uh, that would be in conflict with the LCP, I would presume that uh, that would, you know, we would be debating that. But in this case, um, uh, you know, they do have a fire department approval. Um, now, variances could be supported or minor modifications for other aspects of the code, provided that uh, in, um, you know, in requesting those, uh, the project would be revised in a way that would be more protective of ESHA. So uh, uh, now, uh, this area where the house is has been disturbed. Um, the fuel modification, um, you know, would be kind of overlapping with the road itself. And uh, there's other uh, structures nearby. And so um, there will be less impact if the house was closer to the road. If the house was pushed away from the road, then there would be a lot more grading uh, there would be a much longer driveway and there would be a lot more, um, you know, disturbance to, you know, both ESHA fuel modification wouldn't be overlapping. And so it would, it seemed like that option would not be more protective of ESHA and therefore would not be supported uh, per the LCP. So th th that would be my concern. Um, now, again, I don't know if there's anything they can do in terms of their design to make it safer. I understand the concerns. Um, I also um, agree with uh, 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 Chair Smith that, um, you know, this whole area, uh, unfortunately, is in a high fire zone. And no matter where you put it on the house, it's going to be, you know, very much uh, susceptible to wildfires. Uh, so, you know, I don't think it's going to be 5% better <laughs> um, if you put it one, in one place or another. Um, I think they, there's there's um, uh, materials and other aspects of this project uh, where the architect is, you know, um, designed uh, this house in you know in in consideration of the the high fire zone potential. Um, but again, if there's other ideas, um, you know, I would like to kind of hear those. Commissioner Peak, oh wait, That's Commissioner Peak, um, Commissioner Hill. Yeah, um, I don't think anybody's talking about making it further from the road, it, and nor do I think that if you just took the three levels you had now, if you scooted them down one story, you'd be just as close to the road, and you'd still be taking advantage of the area that has less 
it's already been affected more, say. So I, I think that those questions about ESHA impact and whatnot, those those are a wash. Um, yeah, I, I still have more to say, but on other things. So let let other people. Wait yes, Mr. Vice Chair Maza. Yes, uh, this easily can can be moved to lessen ESHA impact. Uh, the prior house we saw, if you look at C3.0, you'll see, and it's the prior house isn't here. This is from memory, but where the where the fire department turnaround is used to be the driveway into the into the uh, uh, garage. Okay, but there's a large area there that isn't covered by that fire department turnaround that is flat, and you can take. 20 feet off the front of the, the house that's on the cliff and put it over there, same amount of square footage, reduce the ash impact by the 20 feet because it's only 100 feet from the edge. And you would have less view impact. You could even have more square footage. Um, so to say that you have to go down the hill is not true. I mean, you've got all that square footage around the um, fire turnaround that is flat. That's where everybody parks now. It's it's so it's easily built on. It does not increase grading, lowers ash impact, and is. How does it get it off the top of the ridge line? That's Commissioner Hill's concern. You're you're using one story, okay? Which is all. You, which is. You can put one story over there. There's probably 4,000 square feet you can use. Um, you, all you have to do is get a, a minor mod for front yard setback. And that land is sitting there flat right now. You walked over it when you visited it. Uh, so I guess to get a better view, he's pushing the house right up against the cliff. But... To say, gee, that's a fire zone is a lot different. And I've seen this happen in Latigo Canyon. When you have a fire coming up a hill and and a hill that steep with oak trees on it and, and major brush, you get overtopping of the hill by huge flames. It's not just 20 feet of fire coming at you. It's 100. And... Uh, so I'm, you need to pull back. I'm sure these folks will do their mitigation. Um, I'm going to let Commissioner Pete go. So what my uh, thinking on this is, is, I mean, I would like to hear from Vetus as to whether or not he explored moving this house further down the hill. Ask him. I'm trying to do that, I think, is Mike. Hello. Yes. yes. So um, we're dealing with the denuded area that was previously graded. We're trying to keep our development in that. When they graded that area, they took all the rock outcroppings around the top of this hill and rolled them off the side. And so we're trying not to get into the bigger chunks that are laying down there. I don't think that's where Mother Nature put them. I think someone did that with a D9 or something bigger. So we figured that by going for a minor modification of the front yard setback, so if you look at sheet a-1.2a, you can see the area that we're using for our underground tanks and for our hammerhead, but we've moved the house as close to the street as we can. We're pulling it away from the cliff that's to the north, and we're trying not to get into the steep slopes that are below the house, and the trees and vegetation are right there. So we're trying to minimize the amount of natural chaparral brush and scrub oaks that are going to be affected by fuel modification. So the house right now is all concrete construction with steel shutters over the windows. Mm -hmm. That's what allowed us to get rid of roughly 64% of the fuel mod that would otherwise be required for a house. Um, neither the fire department nor forestry were particularly concerned with the topography. In fact, the way they look at this thing, yeah, it's gonna be a torch coming up here, it might be a hundred feet tall, but it's actually gonna blow over the house. The biggest risk to this house- The house is gonna be getting barreled by the fire. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's going to go right over it and get it from the south side is what usually happens. It's what happened to two of my homes. Um, so it's it's probably going to make it there. That's We provided the firefighter walk around, and we've stayed in as tight a zone 
the number one thing we try to take in consideration here is the ESHA. So we've kept this house in the bullseye of the disturbed area. We're not doing any grading outside the building footprint, and we've made the footprint of ESHA mo or fuel modification that affects ESHA that's on the entire property just as tight as we can. There is no way that I can take this house and move it where we've got the hammerhead or move it closer to the street if you look at sheet. So I, I wouldn't necessarily say moving it where you got the hammerhead. I would just say taking the whole thing and sliding it down that slope that's away from the steep slope on the rear. Yes, uh, we're getting into the rocky, steeper slope on the south. But yes, that could be done. It will impact more extra. That was the point of what I was trying so, to explain. But along with that, what you're going to not be getting into, or what I think, which may alleviate some of the concern that Krev had, which I think is a very valid point, although it's outside that 500 foot distance, is that that would lessen the impact on the views from the public road, albeit it's far away, but um, that may better achieve that. Are you in agreement with that, Craig? Uh, well, the 500 foot distance only applies to the circumstances where it, it's a, a topography beyond that's greater than 500 feet. So that's that's not relevant. The fact that it blocks blue water view from further up, there's no distance limit on that. Other than just whatever your, but, your tolerance is, but, but yeah, I'm I'm agreeing. What you're saying if you brought it down, basically in the uh, similar configuration, but just moved everything down one step, same distance from the road. You'd yeah, you basically be taking it so that the top story is almost the roof of that is level with the top of that slope. Exactly, and that I think alleviates some of the concern that you have, and I think that that also alleviates some of the concern that John has. Exactly. especially in, in relative to the rear slope. So I would be curious to hear from Dennis and Jeff as to what their thoughts are about that. And then I would also, you know, if trying to figure out a way to make this work. Well, I, I think the way he has done it does work. You've got a 12 foot rear yard now. You didn't have that before. The more you start sliding it down the hill, the more grading there is. Now you're burying the garage. And now you have, when it does rain, you may have water mitigation issues. You've got to take care of drainage. There's the way this thing sets right now, um, sets where it needs to set. There's not a lot of room to, to play with here. And the, the more you start coming down on those big rocks, um, and it takes a, you know, pretty good sized machine to start breaking all that stuff and getting it out of the way. And, um, no. Absolutely not. I think what, what, uh, Vetus has come up with, Mr. Mataray's come up with right now, it does work. And it's the materials which he's building the house out of, too, that's just about everything. And the fire department's given it's okay. So as you come around the turn at Charmley at either 55 or 60 miles an hour, um, I'm sure that uh, there may be a blink when you see this house, but I don't see anybody stopping at that turn when you come in and you're going, oh, my God, it's blocking the ocean view. So that's where I stand on this. Commissioner There's Jenny? a scenic overlook right there that people pull off at. but and. You could do a, a very similar design, similar masses, but keep the garage exactly where it is and have it on the second of the, the middle of the three floors and, you know, put something for the, the home theater and whatever down below that. Um, so it doesn't, you wouldn't have to preserve the exact same design and moving it down. It's just, a, it's just wasting time here. Uh, Commissioner Jennings. Yeah, I have a few uh, questions to ask, which are going to be, uh, a little confusing, but um, I'm. I have to confess, I am very confused by the treatment that this project has received from staff, as opposed to the project we're going to hear a little later on in 5D. Um, the on page uh, 11 of 23, uh, one of the options for considering. Uh, less damaging alternative. Um, one of the options is a smaller project. And it, it says that the uh, a smaller residence could be proposed. However, reducing the size of the residence would not significantly reduce impacts to public or private views. Uh, should the footprint, re footprint, excuse me, footprint be reduced, the direct land disturbance of construction would be reduced. However, the smaller project would not eliminate the need for an ASHA variance or the site plan review. So in this particular project, you seem to be saying that it's the impacts on ASHA rather than the distance itself 
that should be the determining factor. Is that right, Adrian? Uh, yeah, this is a different project than the other one. Um, in, in this particular project, the entire property is ESHA. So, um, so there's... Same thing. I, I realize that, but so I'm yeah. just asking you questions because I'm going to want to. I want to. I'm, I'm going to want to be interested in why this project uh, has a recommendation for approval, uh, even though you could make it smaller, and it would therefore be less of a space moving into the ESHA. Uh, as a matter of fact, what I'm trying to figure out is 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 whether there is a limiting principle in the other situation and i'll get to it when we get down there but but i i it just seems to me that that if you applied the same principle you you applied in 5d you would say no you've got to make this smaller you've got to reduce it because every foot you extend into esha has an impact it may not be affecting the the brush itself but it reduces it 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 it, it, it takes up sort of the space that should be there um, and but that's apparently not your view because you recommended approval on this project, correct? Well, it, it is our view. Um, and again, this this was uh, considered by the city council, and uh, the reason is back, uh, you know, before the planning commission is because they made some revisions to the project. This is not maxing out their development area. This is also not maxing out their total development square footage. Um, this uh, houses, in fact, uh, I want to say 1,300 square feet, um, uh, less than the um, project that was before the planning commission um, before. And and uh, I want to say it's about 7,000 square feet in the development area, uh, and, and the uh, chapter four would, um, you know, requires 10,000 square feet. So, so they, they've made some revisions to this project. Um, they're not, again, spreading their project as much as uh, ESHA, the maximum allowance uh, would be. And so that's the reason uh, staff was able to recommend this project. Um, but, but again, but, yes. But a smaller project would have less, less uh, ESHA impact, correct? A smaller project uh, could have could have um, potentially and and siding as well. Correct. In in the last meeting, we had a lot of discussion about how big it would have to be, ranging from that you know the apocryphal eight hundred square foot minimum house up to four thousand. We were kind of talking eight somewhere and kind of leaned up and said, yeah, thirty five hundred or four would probably be about right anecdotally but that's i think what a lot of people said then having looked at back at the meeting so well five yeah, is still if, if if you don't mind I, I i my problem is that i see the 800 square foot house as being a lot less apocryphal and actually uh, can i interrupt you, patrick should we be talking about another item i'm not i'm yeah, talking about, about this, this item. item he's not I'm talking about, i'm talking about this item yeah. I'm talking about the other house. And 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 John, I'm talking about this item now, and I'm talking about the fact that I see the 800 square foot uh, apocryphal house being less apocryphal. And and it it it, it uh, as Commissioner Hill was saying that, that we talked about these the you know these various sizes. Um it goes against one of my major concerns, which is the that the uh, application process be as not only as consistent as it can be, but also as predictable as it can be. And um, it seems to me that that this approach is taking away that predictability. One of the things that I've, I've tried to explain over the years is that is that making to the extent you make the process less predictable to the extent you make it more random you you don't affect the development itself all you do is decrease decrease the value of the underlying land that's just simple economics and i think that that's something that that you know needs to be taken into account predictability is very important and to the extent 
that we uh, bring in uh, elements that are not really part of the LIP to uh, apply to projects to, to the extent that we require uh, projects to be redesigned and redesigned and redesigned without any regard to the actual astonishing costs that that imposes. Um, we are making the, the, the process much less predictable. And uh, to me, that's uh, that's a, a, a real problem. So, um, period. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Mazza. Yeah, uh, Jessica, when you talk about 7,000 square feet of approximately of ASHA disturbance or development area, are you counting, uh, if you look at A1.2A, uh, are you counting the underground water tank area and the fire turnaround area and the driveway and all of that? It's a substantial part of this lot. And it's 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 if it's 100 percent ESHA, that's got to count. Let me double check on the thing. Oh. Okay. Uh, now this is a question for Adrian, I guess. Adrian, is there any code that says you cannot have uh, underground water storage under a turnaround or a driveway? Um. Well, yeah, I know you got septic tanks under them, so uh yeah, there is not a a zoning requirement, but there is a um fire department requirement that the water tank has to be uh, gravity fed into the house. Gravity fed. Right. So, okay. so the water has to be at a higher elevation than the uh, level of the house. Well, the underground storage tank in this case is a lower, lower uh elevation. So is that a problem? Yeah. The house is on a hill. And the road is lower than the house. So I don't know how it could possibly be above it. In fact, you can look at the contour lines and it's not. This is why I'm wondering why you, you can't you can't use that area for development. It, it's already disturbed. It's already counted in your development area. It's not. It's not anywhere near as vulnerable to a fire, and uh, it doesn't require these these variances uh, on steep slopes and. We don't have a very not having a walk point. around and all that kind of stuff, uh, but we're told, oh, you can't build there. But I don't understand why. If it's allowed, it's allowed. Now, if you say it can't be, it has to be gravity fed, we've got a problem because it's not gravity fed. There's no chance it's gravity fed. So, uh, in fact, it's underground, which means it's, you can't even get it out of the ground, get it out of the ground without a pump. So, is that a problem? For planning or building and safety? Well, yeah. we have to approve a, 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 a project that qualifies under building and safety. So, so we do, Fernandez. Jeff. We have to follow the building code. It's one of our findings. Ad Fernandez, this is these are just rain harvesters, right? Uh, say that one more time. These are just rain harvesters. It's twenty five thousand gallons. Twenty twenty five thousand gallons. It didn't rain that. It much. sounds like this is a, a requirement of the fire department to have this water on site. Yeah. Right, but it's underground, and uh, we've been told that the fire department requires it to be gravity fed. The the fire department may require it to be gravity fed to a hydrant that's located lower on the property. That may be what the requirement is for, but I don't think that they're using this as potable water for the house. I could be wrong, but yeah, I, I, I you're right. So I, I, I think the question was whether. If a water tank is a fire department requirement, whether that could be underground, and, and I, I provide an answer to that. I, I don't know the specifics about the tank related to this project. I don't know if Jessica or Vitas can provide us an answer to that. Well, we'll just go by the one answer is it, you said it can be underground, just like a septic tank. If, if this was a water tank uh, that was uh, required by the fire department for uh, fire protection of the building, 
they do require that water tank to be gravity fed uh, into the house. So they do need the elevation of that water tank to be um, higher than the fir uh, first level um, elevation of the house. Okay. But I'm going to go along with Commissioner Peak here. That's that's not potable water. This is either for fire control or it's a rain harvester, and that's what the fire department wants for gallons. Or you know they want a big tank up there. They, Chairman Smith, the staff just told us that it has to be above ground. Why don't you ask me? Does he design this thing? I'll he ask. Probably him. knows it better than you. The fire go. department approved this as a tank that would gravity feed to their hydrant. They do want this to flow through. It's a food grade tank. So we have to pressurize for the top floor. They don't care about that. It, it's gravity feeds to the mid level of the house and the bottom level. But at the time that this was plant checked, they were fine with pressurizing the house, provided the water was circulating in that 25,000 gallon tank and provided it would have a non electronic read. And what mattered to them was they'd be able to see the read on the, even if the power's out, see how much water they got in the tank. And that the hydrant, which is on the downhill side of the driveway, that there be two separate hydrants, one that takes advantage of the irrigation system tank, that's the 5,000 gallon, they want that kept separate, and the 25,000 gallon feeds to one of those hydrants, it's gravity fed. They don't really care about the potable water inside the house, except that it is used to change out the water in this tank regularly, so it does not become stagnant. So, uh, you're saying the fire, the, the, uh... The fire hydrant is downhill. Yes, on sheet A-1.2A, you can see two hydrants. We have the private hydrant that feeds from the 25,000 gallon tank, and we also have a draft hydrant on the pool. They're right there uh, where the driveway turns in across from where the 1070 line crosses the road. I, I think that what John's having more of an issue with is even if this is gravity fed, you're not gonna get water pressure up to the second story of the house. We have to pressurize oh. in the house. We have to pump to the house. Okay. Yeah. So when the power's out, how do you do that? Exactly. You're out of luck. You have to shower on the mid level. <laughs> no, I mean when the fire comes, when they turn the power out. Right. You so still have your hoses working out. Yeah, the mid level of the house, you still have the water pressure from that tank. That's it. You still have the hydrant. You still have the hydrant. Your well is no longer working when the power goes out. Okay, so you can no longer put out the fire on the top level. The fire truck is going to use the pump that's built into the fire truck to suck the water out of that okay. thing and pressurize so, it to that house. So that may or may not be true, but we've been told that you could build on this. And I'm wondering why we're always talking about pushing it down the hill, cutting down more more uh, uh, Esha, rather than pushing it towards the street, part of it, the part that's right on the cliff, pushing that towards the street and reducing ESHA, uh, messing with the ESHA and reducing the fire hazard. They're, they're looking for a place to park. This thing's in the right spot. There's no doubt. Um, okay, we, we, beat, we beat this horse to death. I, I think we should, uh, uh, I'll make, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, uh, staff's recommendation. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, my hand is still up here. So I'll second it. May I? Commissioner Mazza. I mean, he'll. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. A couple of things. One, just to reiterate, I, I don't think this has anything, any business being on top of this promontory in terms of the regional line ordinance. But if you guys, if there's a, enough impetus leaning towards the approval as is, there's a couple other things to consider. One, what is the alternate safety access to the basement? Is that I don't see that. Am I just not seeing it? Don't you need a set? I mean, you've got the theater down there and everything. Is is that a uh, like a you, light well? You have in, ingress and egress from the garage, and then you have ingress yeah. and egress from the stairs. Thank you. That's sufficient. Okay. I'm pretty sure that it is. And then, uh, what do you do about the grading? You've got. Uh, 10 cubic yards max truck on this slope on that on that road that's 250 truckloads how what i don't the management plan the hazard i mean that that road is crazy 250 okay. trucks there's it seems like you need some kind of superhuman management plan beyond what i can even imagine to well, speaking of speaking of super super tens can go up there so that that'll help 
And you don't think can't 200, somebody come down at the same time? Two hundred fifty truckloads is not going to. There's not going to be an accident. I, I, at the I trust the Super Ten better because the brakes are bigger than on the on the ten yard truck. So, however you guys want to think about that. Yeah. And it's got a tag. It's got a tag uh, uh, wheel on it. So whatever. What What about traffic impacts? It seems it's like... not going to have any traffic impact. They're, they're going to. They're no. I I've been up there a number of times now, and I haven't passed a single car. And I've gone up there at different times. And they'll, the people will take care of the, 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 the we're not going to have Mr. Popovitz wanted a full-time city employee to watch traffic. Nobody's going to do that. Well, remember you testified that they go 50, 60 miles an hour. So, so they don't, so they can't see the ocean. <laughs> Wait a minute. What's that? What are you talking about? You're saying, oh, when they're coming down the hill, they're going 60 miles an hour. So who cares? If John, they're, they're not doing that on Naranda Lane. They might be doing that on Encinal. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we have a we have a, a motion and we have a second. Can we take a roll call? Chair Smith? Yes. Commissioner Jennings? Yes. Commissioner Hill? Sorry, but no. Commissioner Peak? Yes. Vice Chair Mazza? Uh, I value people's lives more. I'm voting no, and I hope we won't hear this again when it gets appealed. Motion carries. Okay, great. Life C. Coastal Development Permit Number 19-045 and Demolition Permit Number 19-029, Variance Number 20-003, Site plan review number 19-057, minor modification, number 20006, and neighborhood standards and number 21-002, an application for the demolition of the existing residence and construction of a new single family residence and associated development. A wonderful staff report from someone. Oh, Mr. Eaton, sorry. Senior Planner Eaton, there you go. Go ahead, sir. All righty. Uh, thank you, Chair Smith and members of the Planning Commission. How are you guys doing tonight? Next item is uh, for CDP 19045, as mentioned. Next slide, please. So uh, just a quick timeline. This item was heard first at the November 7, 2022 Planning Commission meeting. The applicant revised the project due to some concerns from the neighbors and also some commissioner comments. Next slide, please. Uh, the subject parcel is on the ocean side of Broad Beach Road, which is a scenic area, according to the local coastal program. The existing single family residence sits atop a bluff uh, to the south that runs parallel to Broad Beach and the uh, Pacific Ocean. Next slide. The project includes the following scope. Um, it's kind of a two phase project. First is the demolition of the existing single family residence and the associated development. Uh, then they're going to conduct a bluff, bluff face slope repair uh, and install five below grade uh, pile foundations. Uh, afterwards, they're going to construct a new 3,389 square foot two story single family home with an attached two car garage, a new on site wastewater treatment system, some hardscape and landscaping, uh, and some grading and retaining walls. There are uh, four discretionary requests that are being applied for. Uh, one is a variance for a bluff top setback. Um, one is a site plan review for uh, height up to 28 feet for a pitch roof. One is a minor modification for a reduction of the front yard setback. And the last is a neighborhood standards request for um, structure size greater than, or I'm sorry, structure size consistent with the neighborhood average. Next slide, please. So here's the proposed side, uh, site plan that was uh, revised, as I mentioned before. Uh, the applicant is uh, requesting a minor mod to reduce the front yard setback from the required 32 feet to 20 feet. Um, the building foot, footprint was revised uh, based on some comments from the neighbors and some planning commissioners. Uh, and so the applicant pushed the house further from the bluff and, and then made it in line with the adjacent neighbors. Next slide, please. 
Uh, the slope analysis here shows the topography of the site. Um, uh, you can see the five below grade piles there to the, the left of your screen, but to the south of the property that will be installed at the top of the slope. Um, the bluff top has been uh, compromised, as mentioned before, and so those piles will help to stabilize the slope. And then there is a variance uh, proposed for this project in order to meet the, uh, because the applicant cannot meet the 50 foot uh, required setback from the bluff top. Next slide, please. Here is the first floor plan. The long rectangular shape will coincide with the elongated shape of the parcel. Next slide, please. <clears throat> uh, here's the second floor plan. The project as proposed will comply with the two thirds uh, section of the LIP. Next slide, please. Uh, so here's some elevations. At most, the structure will be 20 feet tall with a pitch roof. The applicant is requesting a site plan review for such height and the excess height is not expected to impact any existing public or private views. Next slide. So the applicant is proposing a neighborhood standards request to allow greater structure size than what is allowed uh, by uh, the design standards. Um, the applicant initially included only the houses along the, buff, the bluff as the neighborhood, but revised their analysis to include all the properties within 500 feet uh, after some concern raised at the last meeting. The new proposal included one beachfront house at 31670 Sea Level Drive. Uh, after some concern over the inclusion of that one beachfront property, uh, staff had analyzed the proposed study and concluded that that beachfront house should not have been in, uh, included in the study. Uh, so the applicant originally proposed 3,426 square feet, but staff is actually re recommending the house to be reduced to 3,389 square feet, which is 37 square feet less than what is proposed in order to meet the neighborhood average. Next slide. Here's a closer look at the analysis and uh, what, what we did, uh, what we are recommending as a change. So the proposed residence uh, shall be no more than 3,389 square feet, which again is 37 square feet less than what is proposed. Next slide. Uh, one thing is the applicant is uh, requesting an additional uh, post for their uh, lower level deck. Um, you know, staff does not typically recommend uh, variances for accessory structures. And so we added a condition that the lower level deck shall be cantilevered and um, that only foundations for the family home should be allowed to encroach in the, in the um, bluff top setback. Next slide, please. So as I kind of mentioned, there's a couple proposed amendments to account for that 37 square foot reduction. Um, finding E2 on the resolution uh, shall be changed to kind of accommodate that as shown here. Next slide, please. Along with that are a few conditions that need to be changed. So condition two shall change the approved square footage from 3,426 to 3,389. Next slide. Uh, condition three, again, we'll just make sure that we account for the 37 square foot change. And then condition 86 is added uh, to require the applicant to show the planning director uh, that they're meeting the satisfaction of reducing the 37 square feet. Next slide. So in summary, um, there was a couple of neighborhood uh, complaints that we um, uh, have analyzed in the last couple meetings for this project. And uh, the staff recommendation is to uh, approve the project as amended. And that concludes my presentation and we're open for any questions. Great, thank you, sir. Um, disclosures, Mr. Uh, Plaza. Uh, I, I disclose that uh, I drove by, I, I went to the Riley hearing. I do have a question on disclosures. This is a continued item. I have the same question on uh, from Patrick on having to uh, either bend to or watch the prior meeting by any new commissioners. <clears throat> uh, 
And Tyler, I, I may rely upon you. When was this item continued from? We're saying November 7th. I think it was the same as the last one, if I'm not mistaken. It was continued to a date uncertain. So we had to uh, re-notice this project. Is that correct. right, Rebecca? Now, um, go ahead, Rebecca. Yes, that's correct. I can double check on the specifics of the dates in the development database. If you They're on the to. front page of the resolution. Ah, perfect. Yeah. Thank you. And so, and so, Commissioner Maza, this one is distinct and different than that that previous one, and that there was no subsequent city council hearing. From what I can tell, what I am reading here is that there was the last the last action on this was that November seventh, twenty twenty two planning commission meeting, at which point it was continued to a date uncertain. Here we are, and so in in in, in taking well, a look it was, at it, it was continued after discussion. Excuse me. Yeah, you are. You are. You are correct. So, so Commissioner Peak, the, the, my determination on this one is different than the than the previous one. So, so it 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 should be noted. And if if you cannot affirm that you have made yourself familiar with the hearing on November seventh, twenty twenty two, um, then of course recusal is is appropriate. Okay. So I did not watch that hearing. So I will recuse myself. But I'm. I think I also need to recuse myself from 5D. Would be this is the same, correct? As well, and so I'm gonna, I guess, check out then for the meeting unless I'm coming back for something after that, Dennis. I don't believe you are, and or you'll just get out of anything, won't you? Just whatever it takes here. <laughs> and and I, would, I, I, I actually apologize because I met with uh, the architect for this project on site and everything, and I was unaware that this was going to come up like this. John, I appreciate you for bringing. I'm not it trying to sandbag you. You're making my you're making my evening a little shorter. So you're, you're going to have some of these as we go along. Anything we've heard before, think about whether it needs to be you know looked at. I will be looking. I'm going to spend a lot of lot of video uh, video time here. Anyways, don't want to take any more time. Thank you, and talk to you later. Thank you. Okay, uh, back to uh, disclosures. We're back to uh, Commissioner Hill. Uh, yeah, uh, let's see. I had a little bit of email with Mr. Kent um, clarifying that he had misunderstood and misrepresented my, my statements about what the neighborhood should be, um, trying to better understand the correct methodology. Um, I also asked Tyler in email, and I think I copied Adrian, saying for discussion purposes, we might want to actually have the... Um, methodology from the Riley case, the, basically the same neighborhood. We might want to have that. Commissioner Hill, is this part of your disclosure? It is. That that we might want to have that distributed to commissioners so that we could, if, you know, be familiar with that methodology. It sounds like an opinion, not whether you met with somebody and that was it. It's an email he sent to staff. Talking about an email to staff and what's relevant is that as far as I know, that was not distributed. So, um, okay. I'll right. leave that there. I do have some questions for staff before we get into the hearing. Commissioner Jennings. Um, uh, I met with uh, Mr. Kent. Um, just went over what, what's in front of us. Okay. Uh, Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I neglected to uh, say that I got an email from uh, the architect and I also uh, I also spoke to him on the phone. Nothing other than in the staff report was discussed. <clears throat> okay, great. Okay, um, let's see public comment. Yes, we have um, our applicant Stephen Kent, and he'll be followed by. Mark Kruger, if anyone else is present in the meeting and would like to speak on this item but has not signed up in advance, please click the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen and we'll circle back to you. If you could open for Stephen Kent. Mr. Kent. Hello. We hear you. Oh, good. Um, thank you for uh, allowing me to present tonight. Um, you may recall this home was situated uh, on a bluff overlooking Broad Beach Road and was impacted by a landslide several years ago. It has been 
uh, determined that because of the tight access, the only feasible way to protect the property is to tear it down and install a row, a row of soldier piles. <clears throat> this uh, pic is a picture of the landslide damage from 2018. Um, understandably, the owner is very worried and he wants to fix the problem, but his hands have been tied. Can I have the next slide, please? This is a picture of the landslide damage from, oh, sorry. This is another picture looking down at the slope uh, from the house. These tarps are what have been protecting the property for the past five years uh, while we've been waiting for our approval. Down below, you can see the green wall. Uh, that's a big retaining wall on piles that Pat Riley built to protect his uh, property after the slide occurred. Uh, next slide, please. This is an aerial view of the project and the neighboring homes. Since the last meeting, we have pushed the house back from the slope and shrunk the house even more than before. Uh, we did this in response to concerns raised from one of the neighbors and also some of the commissioners. The purple line is the existing house and deck. Since the last hearing, we've pushed the house back to the bold red line. The house sits, uh, now the house sits back a little behind the string line of the adjoining homes and the deck is at the string line of the adjoining homes. Uh, additionally, we shrunk the house. Previously, the house was 3,680 square feet, which was shrunk about 300 square feet under the allowable TDSF per the last hearing. And now since the last hearing, we've shrunk the house an additional 250 uh, square feet beyond that. So now the house is 320 or 3,426 square feet, including the two car garage. And it's more than 550 square feet under the allowable T, uh, TDSF. Um, these numbers are before the revision that Tyler made uh, and planning made just before the hearing, um, taking another 37 square feet off the house. Um, Next slide, please. Here's a site plan showing the outline of the, of the existing house, the new uh, versus the new house. You can see the house and deck have been pushed back further from the bluff. You can also see the outlines of the neighboring homes in comparison to ours. Next slide, please. Here is the first floor plan, again, showing the relationship to the neighboring homes and also to the line of the existing home that will be demolished. Um, also, I'd like to point out that the new house is only slightly larger than the existing house that was built in 1978. The new house measures just 136 square feet bigger, which is an increase of only 4% over the old house. Uh, next slide, please. Here is a second floor plan. At the last hearing, the neighbors to the west uh, at the top of the page expressed concern that our deck went out as far as theirs. And then someone on the deck of our house could look across the deck of their house and compromise their privacy. Although we thought this was a big ask to push our second floor deck and our second floor back further than theirs, we went ahead and did this to hopefully make everybody happy and finally get this project uh, over the goal line. Um, next slide, please. Here's a cross section of the property showing the 28 foot maximum height and the roof height matching the same height as the existing house. Additionally, you can see the posts holding up the deck just behind the piles that are dotted lines in the lower left hand corner. Um, Planning indicated that the two structural posts may not be allowed and the deck might have to be cantilevered off the building structurally, which would be quite an engineering feat if we were forced to do that. We ask that this condition be removed since these posts are set back from the edge of the deck and will not be visible to any, uh, for anyone to see. Uh, next slide, please. 
This is a picture from across the street showing how the neighbor's view will be improved after the big eucalyptus tree is removed and making room for the house to be built. Uh, next slide, please. Here's an exterior view of the proposed house from the street. We believe the new house will be a beautiful and welcome enhancement to the neighborhood. Next slide, please. This is a closer up view of the architecture and the materials. Next slide, please. This is a view looking out to Broad Beach from the master bedroom. Next slide. And this final view is what would, what would be a drone shot or what you would see if you were in a helicopter hovering above Broad Beach. You can also see the very two small structural support posts that are tucked away under the deck. This is the only uh, vantage point uh, that you would be able to see those posts if you were in a helicopter. Uh, next slide, please. So in summary, these are the reasons we think you should approve this project. Um, since the last hearing, we've pushed the house back further from the slope and reduced the square footage even further. The new house sits further back from the bluff than the existing house and is behind the string line of the adjoining neighbors. The roof ridge height of the new house is the same as the existing house. The square footage of the new house is only 136 square foot larger or 4% than the existing house. Uh, and if you reduce it even further as planning has suggested, then it'll only be 99 square foot larger than the existing house. Um, and this is all way below the average uh, TDSF of the neighborhood. Uh, the final point is, and the biggest reason is that you should approve this, is the homeowner is extremely worried about the slope and the future stability of the property. Um, next slide, please. As a final point, there seems to be a controversy brewing about how the neighborhood standards should be calculated. We believe we got it right the first time. As per the direction of the prior planning director, we only included properties with the same physical features in our TDSF calculations. And that, those are the homes along the bluffs uh, surrounded by the green line. Per the LAP, we excluded beach homes along sea level drive and the homes on the opposite side of Broad Beach Road because they are mostly one story and wider frontage lots while the bluff side homes are mostly two story on narrow lots. Because all this was suggested, because it was suggested at the last hearing, we run the TDSF calculation based on all homes within the 500 square foot radius, we did so. But we still do not believe this is the correct interpretation of the LIP. According to the TDSF calculation defined by the LIP, you can see that we are 50, 558 feet below what should be allowed. I would like to save any of my remaining time for rebuttal to explain further if necessary. Um, however, I'm hoping that the commission can see the forest through the trees and get this project approved so that homeowner can finally get going on protecting his property. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Stephen. You'll have uh, approximately six minutes for rebuttal. Our next speaker is Mark Kruger. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. We can. I don't take too much of your time, but thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Um, I'm a certified engineering geologist. I've been working in the city of Malibu for about 25 years. I don't want to keep this kind of brief, but um, I'm here to answer any questions you may have regarding you know, geotechnical issues or coastal bluff issues or stability or the chronology of, this, of what happened out there. Um, this failure happened in, in February of 2018, so it's been over five years. And uh, I would like to, you know, for, for the sake of my client, you know, get this thing repaired as soon as possible before we have any more erosion and instability. And thank you very much. And thank you. And I just as a point of clarification, I was not aware that you were part of the applicant team. Um, so that does reduce your time, Stephen, by about 
40 seconds. Um, and earlier in the meeting, I saw a hand raise from Fred Gaines was, are you requesting an opportunity to speak on this item or was that just a mistake? Because I see the hand down now. Mistake. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So we could return to Stephen Kent. Mr. Kent? Yes. Do you have anything? You're good? Uh, I have nothing further except, you know, uh, I'm sure we'll get into this TDSF calculation for neighborhood standards. I, you know, we ran the, the alternative calculation because we were, you know, it was suggested that we do it, but I don't think that was the right way to go. And now staff has gone a step further and said, oh, we should reduce another 37 square feet because that alternative calculation included one beach house. I, I think the correct way to look at this is the way it was originally calculated. I think we follow the LIP. I don't think the other method does follow the LIP. Okay, very good. Uh, commissioners? Yeah, before we get, get into it, I don't know how the, this works legally, but can we take five? Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's probably not a bad idea. Uh, close the public hearing and just not open the, not come back up to the table yet? Is that? The... And that, that would work, Commissioner Hill. So, Chair Smith, we can just end the public hearing and then whatever, whatever the length of the recess at your discretion. Okay. Um, I don't know, six, seven, seven minutes. How's that? What, whatever. Seven minutes. Okay, turn off your cameras and your microphone. Thank you, Vice Chair.
Mr. Donegan. It, Chair, I must give you credit. I was timing it on my watch, and that was exactly seven minutes on time <laughs> on target. Perfect timing. I'm here as well whenever you're ready to resume. Commissioner Jennings, Vice Chair Mazza, no hot mic this time. <laughs> Adrian might need a second to get back to his desk. Dennis, your your mic is better now. Did you change out your different computer or different mic or something? New mic. All right. Oh. Getting fancy. Got me a real one. Walter Cronkite. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Walter Concrete. Okay, who we got here? We got one, two, three, four. We have an attorney. We have a senior planner. We're still waiting on Mr. Fernandez. I think Rebecca said he was. Yeah, he in is route back coming to his down desk. the hallway. He will be at his desk in just a moment. But you guys are both in City Hall. Yes. Uh huh. As yeah. is Tyler. An another early I have company evening for, this evening. Yes, another early evening for staff. Well, it'll be early. <laughs> there he is. Okay, uh, we open the meeting back up for uh, for discussion on uh, uh, three one or uh, I'm sorry mm -hmm. uh, th three one six six two Broad Beach Road. I, I can make some opening comments that will streamline things somewhat. I think um, since you're going with your hand up, Commissioner Hill, go ahead. Okay, um, okay, I, I think. First, uh, regarding the whole neighborhood definition question, uh, we are so in the ballpark now that it doesn't, in, in my view, it doesn't bear beating a horse about, you know, counting square foot here and there or different methodologies in which house we include and all that. <clears throat> so I think we could probably set their mind at ease about all that stuff. Um, and just as an example, well, having said that, I, I don't think we're using the correct methodology, and we could talk about how we need to do that correctly in the future. But I think in this particular case, it doesn't come out with a particularly significantly different result. So that's why I think we don't necessarily need to uh, spend a lot of time arguing about that. Um, that said, I do have some other significant concerns about it that we can get to. I first do have a couple quick questions of staff. Um, we in the last hearing we talked about the neighborhood character relative to anything over the um, neighborhood character because we have a site plan review here and uh, relative to anything over 18 feet and I was surprised that we didn't get any kind of exhibits about the heights of other houses or the volumes or you know what we call visual mass weirdly um, the setback of second stories relative to the street or anything like that. Um, why why did why don't we have a, that kind of uh analysis here um i don't think it was raised or it was requested last time uh what i can tell you is that all those houses along the bluff are two stories and and you know similar heights are higher okay and then i why there was a lot of discussion about the required bluff top erosion rate analysis that calculation that's supposed to be done by a licensed certified coastal or uh, engineering geologist not coastal uh blah 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 we don't i don't think that we have that uh erosion rate analysis in in hand what well, that was deemed not necessary for some reason somehow is is the erosion? Are you concerned about coastal retreat, uh, Commissioner Hill? Uh, I'm concerned about bluff retreat. I don't care whether we call this a coastal bluff. It's obviously not washed by the ocean, but it, it is a like the Coastal Commission's definition. This is a a bluff um, that would require that erosion rate analysis for you know wind and rain and whatever else erodes a a slope. Are are, are you talking about the the analysis that allows the house to be go from a 100 foot setback to a 50 foot setback is that uh yeah i'm i'm yeah and in any in any 
of those uh, situations, one of that pieces is the erosion rate or analysis. Yeah. And, you know, I think nominally it's typically, and, and not, not to say this is typical, but that, you know, it's maybe a couple inches per year and over a hundred years, that would be 17 feet. And we don't know what this would be. Uh, we do know that the next door neighbors and this bluff itself is has experienced some failure already. So I imagine that professional analysis would say this might be more than uh, two inches a year average. That they're, they're, so that seems like a big thing missing from the whole package here. Um, just, you know, even, even uh, Lauren Doyle in the last meeting said um, that, yeah, they've, they've met the factors of safety with the piles and everything, um, but that still leaves the legal question of the 50 foot setback. And it leaves the question of the erosion rate. Cause if, if we just say, yeah, the piles work great and if that's gonna hold it up and, and the, the rest of the bluff between the piles can erode out from between it over the years, um, then we're faced with that situation that we didn't like at Cliffside where the emergency piles were put in and sort of too late to recognize that in a couple decades, that's just gonna be a big concrete wall. And it seems like that's the situation here. If we don't set it back far enough, those piles on the front edge would be exposed soon enough. And just from the beach, what you'd see is effectively a concrete tower with a couple floors of house on the top of it. Okay, so that's not going to happen. So what's going to happen is they're going to get in there, get this house down, get it out of the way. They're going to go ahead and over X that slope. They're going to put it back <clears throat> at 95%. They'll barely be able to put a plant in it, but they'll be able to plant some some kind of a material in there to help with the erosion of it when they get through with this thing it's not going to go down the slope and it's not going to go into the backyard of, of mr riley it's going to stay there and the piles are going to keep the house there and that's all that they're doing they need we need to get this fixed for these people they've got a good plan in place these are long-term people they're not new people this these poor folks have been here for five years and you're going to worry about what maybe is going to happen. However, I know what they are going to do, what's not going to happen. So right. you got to, wait, to, to, to be clear, to be clear. So you're saying they're going to put shot creed all over that surface? No, and not at this? all. Well, you don't have got, to. folks, we've got Mark Kruger, who was just in front of us. He's yes, an engineering geologist. Why don't you ask him and let him tell you what's going to happen? Mr. Kruger. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Sorry, I had a long day in the field, so I'm a little tired. But um, you know, the city, I don't, in my opinion, the city doesn't view this as a coastal bluff. From a geology standpoint, yes, but a coastal bluff implies that you have wave erosion at the bottom, which we don't yeah. have. It's not, not, not the same. It's not the same bluff as Bird View and Point Doom, where you have active erosion at the beach. Okay. This nobody, is, nobody's let me, arguing let me, that. Nobody's let me, arguing let me, let me that. Let me finish, please. Let me finish. I'm going to give my spiel and then I'd be happy to answer any questions. And I, I, I appreciate this dialogue. It's, it's actually fun for me. Um, but the slope is 40 feet high. The lower 20 feet is already retained by two, three retaining walls on Mr. Riley's properties, two of which are on like 60 foot caissons that I personally was hiking over and observed. So now we're talking about a 20 foot slope measuring from the top of Mr. Riley's wall to our pad. We have 20 feet of hill. Is we meet the current safety, I, I get your point, but with the piles that we're gonna install on the top, with the grading and compaction we're gonna do, the likelihood of any additional erosion on this slope is, is very, very low. And you could ask for a study and we can quantify, I can look at aerial photographs over the last 60, 80 years and quantify and measure and see if there's any uh, coastal bluff retreat. I think it's very minimal based on what I've seen from this property over the last five years. Okay. What you've seen. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, I was going to say we, we could we could maybe put a pin in that. I think your your answer is helpful. No, I, I I'd like to comment on that. But but I have more to say about bluff relative to that. But is your comment exactly on that point, John? Yes, it is. Number one, this is a coastal bluff. There are several kinds of bluffs in Malibu. A sea cliff. To find in the LIP is affected by coastal erosion. 
a coastal bluff isn't necessarily. That is a fiction. It's been disproved by the Coastal Commission. Norm Haney can tell you how he got his house turned down. Same way, okay? This is that. Whenever anybody says this has anything to do with waves, it doesn't, okay? Now, Section D of the chapter called Shoreline and Schleff, Shoreline and Bluff Development in the LIP is very, very specific. There's two cases that you can have. One, you have to do a site stability study. Probably not done. I, I, I don't think we need to torture this applicant because there's a, there's a there's a retaining wall that's been put in without coming before us. The staff did it, okay? But, so I'm assuming Mr. Kruger will certify that this is a 1.5 stability factor on that bluff because of those caissons. But well, that's that brings it to case two. If it's a 1.5, these are the exact words in the Coastal Act. If the bluff exhibits both gross and superficial factors of safety against landsliding greater than 1.5, then the development shall be set back a minimum distance equal to the distance that the bluff might reasonably expect it to erode over 100 years plus 10 feet. That's exactly what it says. It has nothing to do with waves. It has nothing to do with retaining walls. It has nothing to do with stability. It has to do with weather erosion, okay, of the top edge of the bluff. And it's very, very, very specific, okay? Now, we can say, gee, these poor people, they've been here forever. This is what the Coastal Act says. This is what we must follow. Now, we can make variances. But there's another section of the Act that says you must do an erosion study. No question about it. Um, wasn't done. It's not a huge deal in this case. So we may get around that by saying, okay, we can do a setback of X, X from the erosion line, which is what this, the Coastal Act says to say. Okay, we hear this over and over and over again. There's no waves. It makes no difference. We're talking the top of the bluff, not the bottom. So we can solve that. <clears throat> But it needs to be done. We need to give the right variance to have it done. And, and they're asking for a five-foot variance. I don't know where we go here, but we could say four feet from the top of the 200, the 100-year erosion line. 100 years. There's no piece of land in Malibu that's in the same exact place it was 100 years ago. None. Not one. So, when, so I expect that when that's done, it won't come back at zero. Uh, but that's that's the explanation. It's it's directly in 10 D2. It, I would can, use exact words. Can I ask for a clarification on that? So in, in your the most charitable reading that you would get uh, from LIP 10.4 D2 is that uh there would be zero erosion here based on this study that would be done that Mark would do and we'd see zero, but nonetheless, that still says you need 10 foot be buffer beyond that, whatever that number is. So you need that 10 foot anyway. And then the other thing that is of concern here on, from a more of a legal standpoint, when we were talking about what well, we can give a variance down from the 100 to the 50 and then we can figure out some kind of factor to get it lower than 50 foot setback somehow. One of the problems here, and this was this was said the last time we heard this case, um, I think it was maybe Commissioner Smith said, well, all these other houses are out at a certain level on the bluff. So this guy should be able to come to that exact same level too. One of the legal problems there is that the the neighborhood standards analysis expressly excludes bluff setbacks from consideration in the neighborhood standard. So in 3.6L, um, uh, Planning Commission may approve increased height, structure size, and or development area or decreased setbacks, except in the case of ESHA buffers, bluff setbacks, view corridors, et cetera. So there's a few things that you we we can't, we somehow have to figure out what the setback is, given that it's 
supposed to be 100 feet and no less than 50 feet. And we're somehow trying to talk about should it be five or 10 feet or something in there? And I, I don't know how we even get down to that low number. Well, I think we asked Patrick if a variance can be given under those circumstances or ask uh, Adrian, because this says under no circumstances. Okay, that's that's pretty plain. Got it. Commit uh, Vice Chair Mazik, go ahead, Commissioner Jennings. Right. So the John read off the, the appropriate section. It is the normal setback is 100 feet. You can go to 50 feet. It's not a variance. It's not anything. It's just <clears> if you can make these findings, you go to 50 feet and plus the 10 plus the 10 foot buffer. But that's not what we're doing here. There is a variance request to extend this closer than that. And a variance is is always available to be applied for the application of any provision in the LIP, whether it's whether it should be granted or not is a separate question, but it's always available to be applied for. So I'm just trying to explain the confusion that seems to exist. But are, so um, are you saying that you, that, that would uh, countervail the language that says expressly that uh, bluff setbacks are excluded from the development uh, standards? Or? No, 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 no. No, right. what I'm talking about is is uh, it it countervails the language that says that uh, that that yeah it is only 100 foot or 50 foot and you can't you know you can't jigger around with that. Really? No, the point with the neighborhood standards is this is a neighborhood standards application only for structure size. It has nothing to do with bluff setback. It has nothing to do with it at all. So it's just not a consideration. So I'm guessing, Mr. Eaton, that Ms. That Commissioner Jennings just. Right, go ahead. But if you want to, yeah, no, uh, Commissioner Jennings said it perfectly. So, uh, the neighborhood standards are only for structure size. They are applying for a variance for the bluff setback. Well, right. good. Well, that's good. It's not a question of you know, this guy gets to match the other guys just because that's what they have. Right, but uh, the language of the code is specific that you have to do. An erosion study and yeah. set back from there, not from some fictitious bluff. Uh, um, all right, so there's a couple of ways we can do this. We could ask staff whether, uh, because this is something that has come up over and over again about the issue of what kind of study needs to be done, and it's all laid out in whatever it is, uh, uh, 10.4, uh, about what needs to be done. And if it's been done, it's just it's the staff that makes the determination whether it can go to 50 feet or 100 feet. Beyond that, it's a, there's a question of whether there's enough of the of the evidentiary uh, elements to make a, a case for a variance, and that's a separate question entirely. Uh, or what we can do is, since we're uh, since there's to get a third vote, uh, why don't we just say one of you guys uh, just tell them what you're willing to give them. Uh, because that's the only way he's going to get out of here tonight. Otherwise, it's going to be continued again. Tell him what you're willing to give him. You know, how many square feet you're willing to give him, how, whether you're willing to give him a setback of this, that, and the other thing. He, maybe they're desperate enough that they really want to protect this lot and, and, and they mean it and, and they'll take whatever you're willing to give them. But let's just cut, it, cut to the chase. Well, I, I, give I, them. I would propose when, when uh, either I assume Craig and I are going to make the motion, but uh, I would propose that we give a variance of four feet from the, the safety factor, the 100-year study that should come somewhere near five feet, which is what they're asking. I don't know how much things erode, but the study is required. It can't be just picked out of the air. Just what are you willing to give them? And that's that sounds like that gives them what they want. Okay, I'm I'm not going to bust their chops, but when when you when you go and look at the property and you see the slide next door, okay, do you call that erosion or do you call that a slide? So things do change on bluffs. Uh, so I just want to follow the code, and so that's what I would propose, unless somebody comes up with something better that gives them what they want and it stays it keeps it legal. 
So uh, you can't just keep on going on and saying there is no bluff erosion. Do, do you understand what he's proposing, Adrian? Because I don't. But maybe yeah, I, I I I do. Um, I have um I've drafted a condition that we can apply. But before we do that, I think it would be helpful to hear from Mr. Kroger to make sure that um, it looks like they're confident that there'll be uh, little to no erosion uh, within the next 100 years. I just want to make sure that whatever condition we apply, um, he's, he's, he's comfortable with that. Um, is, is that. Is that OK to hear from him? Sure. Yes, absolutely. Go ahead, Mr. Kerr. <laughs> What would you like me to say? Uh, the, the I'm not, let me, let me, I like, anyway, I'm not going to retract the definition of, of the, your coastal bluff. I mean, I'm not going to argue with you on that. If, if I have to do the study, I have to do the study. I, I could care less. Um, my, my professional opinion is, is we're going to make this slope a lot better than it, than it is. And um, to delay this process is, is, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say, but uh, we're talking about a 20 foot slope. That's remaining. This is a modified coastal bluff. I'm, I'm not going to argue with what the definition of it is. You, you seem to know what you're talking about. The, the um, question I wanted to ask you, I'm sorry to interrupt. It's, it's, it's a question of, uh, I know you're confident that there will be very little erosion. Um, the, um, what well, a condition that we want to craft is one that would require you to do the study. And then um, after you provide the study, we'll know uh, the erosion line and we want to maintain um, Commissioner Maza is suggesting a four foot setback from that erosion line. Is that something that uh, you feel confident about uh, considering the design of this house? You know, it's difficult to ascertain. I mean, I can look at historical photographs for the last 60, 80 years and try to quantify it and see if I can pick the same spot to something to measure. So it's not so easy, but, um, but we can come up with a rate, which is what I've done before. And and see where that puts us. I mean, that's it's a good question. I'd have to, you know, look at photos and kind of do an do an assessment. Uh, Adrian, but, I just want to comment. Um, it's not permissible to armor the the bluff. It's development. So I don't consider an answer coming back that there's no erosion in a hundred years acceptable. And. I understand. And because you just cannot rain on something for a hundred years and have it not change. Okay. I don't care if it's an inch or five inches or 10 inches or a foot, but it can't be zero. Well, you can put the correct ground cover on it and that'll sure as hell slow it up. You I cannot can develop a slope, a coastal bluff. It's not development. Well, development. It's no planning, no nothing. Okay. You are absolutely allowed to do just that until it starts to take off and then it grows on its own. But if you get the correct material on the slope, that will help hold it in place. And they can grade this slope back into the pad if they need to for the strength. So please, please make sure you know what you're talking about here. I know what I'm talking about, and I, I counteracted what you had said because you never read the code, okay? I read it to you, okay? I can read you the other section say the only development you can do on a, on a bluff is a public trail, the only development. Okay, so all we want to do is be reasonable, but to say zero is not reasonable. Okay, it's impossible. You show me one piece of land in Malibu that hasn't changed in 100 years, and I'd be amazed. Okay, um, now, so that's. That's a proposal I will make if I make the uh, make the motion. Um, I have a. Do you want to go on to your other questions? Yeah, closely related question here. Uh, LIP ten point four point D also says. And so the question is, is this covered by the variance? The variance would would uh, negate this language that says ancillary structures such as decks, patios, that do not require structural foundations may extend into the setback area, but in no case shall be sited closer than 15 feet from the bluff edge. So, and, and I understand maybe that's why staff was telling him he might need to cantilever that deck because it's hanging out over the bluff, but 
how how deep is this deck even? I mean, if 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 the deck is supposedly not even supposed to be within 15 feet of the bluff edge, and we don't know what the edge is because we haven't measured it yet, it feels mm -hmm. like we're talking about a house that should be, you know, at least that 15 feet further back from it. No. Well, I know you can't cantilever over a bluff. I mean, that's really so. The question is, when we're saying we're They've applied for a variance for the bluff setback. Does that encompass and capture that language that a deck cannot in, shall in no case be sighted closer than 15 feet from the bluff edge? So the variance is for a reduction to the bluff setback. And I, I think we, we mentioned before that the, the requirement specifically is that no structure with a foundation is allowed to be closer than 50 feet. So, and 15, that would in that, 50, well, but, 50, 50, 50 feet. And, and uh, the, fifth, the 15 is for anything that even that doesn't have a foundation. That would be for, for things like the uh, on grade, uh, uh, you know, slab or on grade uh, uh, paver, something like that, uh, that does not require a foundation. In this case, the deck, uh, while like we were saying, is allowed to. Uh, you know, project into the bluff setback. Um, the piles are not because the piles is a foundation. Right. And the result that is also required to meet the same 50 foot setback. Um, so that's the reason why staff wasn't supporting the the piles to support the, you know, the deck. Um, and, you know, we are making the findings for the house itself, but we're not making the findings for the deck. Let me ask you this, Adrian. Uh, the exact language is ancillary structures such as decks, patios, walkways that do not require structural foundations may extend into the setback, but in no case sighted closer than 15 feet to the bluff edge. So isn't a deck extending into the 15 feet? Without a uh, foundation, isn't that what they're talking about? Yeah, that's it's all, exactly it's all encompassing. Yeah. Um, okay. That, that, that's I, I. I think. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Miles. I think that's probably the point that Commissioner Hill was making before, and I. I, I didn't understand it. Um, so. So you're you're right um, in that um, you know, but we're. That section of the code is anticipating the development on grade, so it's not necessarily uh, uh, contemplating projections. And so we have seen in the past, uh, you know, decks and things like that uh, without, you know, above grade projecting, um, you know, over that. And but we don't see it often, to be honest with you, because again, if the setback is required to be 50 feet away. Um, that means the deck is not going to project, um, you know, 30 feet uh, into the 15 foot setback that re it's require the absolute setback for decks. So we don't see that very often, um, but we have allowed decks, um, you know, second floor decks and other things like that to project into the 15 foot setback. Okay, okay so, so let me I, hang on, you. Vice Chair, Vice Chair, hang on, Commissioner Maza or Jennings. Oh, I'm sorry. I, do I have my hand up? I have I thought you did. I, 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 as long as you have me, uh, yeah. The, the, the <laughs> distinction there is between, as as Adrian points out, the distinction there is between things which actually sit on the ground. They're on grade. A, a projecting deck is just in space, and it makes no sense to apply that limitation to a projecting deck. I'm going to go to Mr. Kent first, uh, Vice Chair. Mr. Kent, go ahead. Um, I was just wondering, uh, since all the other neighbors along the bluff, there's got to be, what, 30, 40, 50 homes, they all go to the edge of the bluff. Um, can these standards really be applied? Can we single out one house and say, we're going to hold you to a different standard uh, than all the other homes along the bluff? And we're going to... I mean, we've been talking about a 50-foot setback, but uh, I, 
I'd be curious to know from the city attorney, like, is, is it even possible for the commission to do this, to like single out one house and say, we're going to, we're going to drastically reduce your quiet enjoyment and you're not going to get the same as what your neighbors have. I want to point out that's not what we're trying to do, but okay. But I mean, when you talk about applying these standards. Of, that, 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 if since since the city attorney didn't answer, the the that's one of the well, elements that goes into the question of whether you're entitled to get a variance or not. If you're deprived of the same use of your property that other people have and they're similarly situated. Right. And, and and hang on. And and, and just to, to, to buttress that that the the findings, the required findings are all listed in the in the in the staff report and, and no action, at least from I can tell, yet, has, has been made yet. So so any hypothetical, you know, uh any 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 legal hypothetical before the entire process has played out is 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 premature at this point. And 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 no, in in order to approve the project as proposed. The required findings must be made by this body. Can, just can, I ask, can I ask a legal question on that? Um, what does it mean when the LIP says, in no case shall? It means it was written by English majors who don't understand that you can always have a variance. Correct. There's a variance, yeah. So, so they, they, just because it says, in no case shall, that, that, that does not vitiate the, the the variance process. Okay, now let me ask you this, uh, and this is probably Adrian' question, and and I, I want them to have their deck. I mean, and you're saying that they can leave her, but you must respect the bluff edge. I know in the case of Norm Swimming Pool, it was can leave it over the bluff edge. Coastal Commission said not a chance ever so you can't be can leaving things over top of bluff can you it's not it's not proposed to be that way well if we you know I, I, the reason i'm asking that is if we said we put in the language we talked to about before about where the where the top of bluff is and then we say okay we're going to give you a variance to can leave her a deck that has to line up with the variance for the setback from top of bluff. It can't go beyond that. That's my question of Adrian, because that's isn't over the top. The, isn't the, the variance for the cantilever of the deck is because uh, staff doesn't want the two posts midstream and uh, in the in the in the cantilever deck. So the engineers have to plan about steel odd by beams all the way into the house and what can be carried out that far and sit on top of the the porn no, place I, walls I, or whatever they use. I understand that. What I'm saying is we can allow them to do that up to the point it reaches the erosion line, which is the top of bluff, and we can't give them a variance beyond that. We can't give them a variance they're, they're over the top of a, 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 a coastal bluff. I mean, stick it out there. That, that would be up to the planning commission. But again, this is a unique case uh, where we're actually processing a variance for a top of bluff setback, uh, I I can't recall the last time we did that. Um, did we, have, so, didn't we have one on merit like that? We had the one that was out, and the deck went out. Um, there we were, had one. We had one. That was not a variance. House. Yeah, that was not a variance for for top of bluff, but there was a whole but bluff discussion came, on that yes. project. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. So we have yet to see this, but again, the way that our setbacks uh, from a bluff have been applied is based on development on the ground. And so, um, you know, again, the planning commission may feel different about this and may want to restrict the, you know, the, um, uh, the deck from exceeding the top of bluff, or in this case, the uh, require uh, retreat setback um, if, if the commission chooses to add that condition to it. Well, these guys, I, these guys I want to point are... out, I want to point out that the Coastal Commission has specifically denied a city project doing just that for that very reason and spelled it out. They specifically denied. 
It, it, I'm sorry. Is there any anything suggesting that the proposed deck extends out over the it, top of the bluff? No, it's I'm just not. trying to craft a a motion that allows the deck to go out to that level. It, so, it but it's back from the top of slope right there. This this map uh, it, it expressly shows deck going over the edge of the bluff. The east elevation on A three point two. Okay, A3.1 west elevation, that deck is not past top of slope. Well, my, my, my thought about this, because Commissioner Jennings asked, you know, what could, what could get us there? What do we need here? I, my, my take is that there are several sections here that we're implicitly asking or explicitly asking for a variance from, all of which are wanting to put things much further, much further back from the bluff edge than what they're asking for. Much you know, we've further got, forward much further back from the edge yeah. um and and so you know my thought would be at at the very minimum even if we're doing a variance we're talking about safety and so that would to my mind entail the slope analysis the, the erosion analysis study plus 10 feet and that that's still really close and that would be to be ignoring all this language that sh they shall be not closer than 15 feet and supposed to be 50 feet and all that. If the analysis says it's going to erode, you know, two feet in 100 years, we need that 10 foot buffer by code. That's still, we should be back, you know, 10, 15 feet at least from the edge here. I just, I feel like we're too close on top of it to, there are too many layers of this that we're waiving to give a variance. Okay, so it looks like if, you know we can we can go one or two ways. You guys can either come up with a motion that allows these people to move forward, or no motion will pass and and it'll go into whatever limbo things go into when there's no motion to to. Yeah, and I'm tr I'm trying to I'm trying the reason I'm asking all these questions is I'm trying to do that. Okay, and make it legal. I know I for a fact that if you go over the bluff edge. Anybody who takes the coastal will lose. But it's not. It's back. But, but, but let, 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 let's just get a motion. Okay. Well, I have one more one more thing that is very important. Number one, uh, it is over, and all you have to do is look at the A31 and several other plans. Yeah, um, A31. It's back. A31. No. Do you see? You see where the posts are for the house on A31? But we're not using the posts. No, the house itself. The the foundation of the house. Okay. Yeah. It goes straight into the ground, right? That's not natural grade. So uh, now I have one other question, and that is that, and this is the important one because we were talking all about how big it should be, who you, who you should count, etc. I voted against the Pat Riley decision because it made absolutely no sense the way that the LIP is written. But this particular house is contiguous. It's impossible to impossible to argue that if we determined that that's how the neighborhood was determined for Pat Riley, when you're touching the other property, you can't argue that that it's different in this case. Okay. So I think we made a mistake. I'm going along with the majority. Uh, so we had them calculate it the way you guys decided to calculate this neighborhood. Now, I think at some point, the staff should get races and decide how to do this because every time it comes up, it's different. Now, so my question would be, since they're contiguous, what number did Pat Riley come up with oh, for yeah. this neighborhood? It, it was exactly the same. John, it was pretty close. They're down. What they've proposed is now down, you know, within, I think it's less than 10 feet of what Riley's standard was. Granting, they would be different because their 500-foot circles would be, you know, maybe 90, 95% the same, but not exact. Well, they touch each other. So, it's, okay, so that answers my question. So I'd like to make a motion that this house be approved with a variance for front yard setback of no, no, no. 4 feet from the calculated 
and I mean calculated, not it's oh, it looks like zero. I mean calculated, um, hundred year uh, erosion calculation. And uh, I'd like to make a motion, add to that motion that um, uh, the deck can be cantilevered with no posts, as Adrian said, and that the deck can cannot exceed the erosion line, which is the top of bluff. And I think that's the same size deck they're going to come up with, but uh, that makes it legal. I know for a fact that Coastal has definitely held out off against extending over the top of bluffs. And um, let's Jim, see. And I'm and um, so you're asking for a report on top. A required by the Coastal Commission report on erosion, erosion from the top of the bluff. Over so John, this, this, I, I like what you're asking for, but this doesn't get them out the door tonight because that, if they have to pull it back a certain amount, then that's a redesign. That's still something we'd have to look at. So, well, I don't know where they have to pull it back. Uh, the way I've made the motion, I'm that's what I'm saying. To, so, I'm willing to take amendments, but I think unless they come back with a big number for erosion, we haven't touched the house. We haven't touched the deck. Okay. Now, maybe you could do this way, six inches that way, whatever. It's, maybe, it's, maybe you could do a conditional thing that says, okay, you need to set it back 10 feet based on that uh, buffer safety clause. And you do have to do the study, but it's conditional. If the study shows erosion less than significant, I don't know how you phrase that. Um, I would. And, and apologies to interrupt. I, I would I would advise heavily against approving a project with conditions yeah, subsequent. Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah, can yeah, yeah. if you know what, right. what you want tonight and right. say, hey, this is we're going to do it. But attempting to predict and then modify the conditions on a future act that or future study act, whatever word you want yeah. to use, that we're not a thousand percent clear on is is not advisable. It is it is open to all kinds of you know potential issues. I think, my, we've, my, I think we've passed. I think we passed plenty of, um, and Adrian, you can correct me on this, but I think we passed plenty of CDPs that have a condition that staff verifies calculations and 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 requires uh, certain things that aren't spelled out, other than what they're required for in the uh, LIP. So and what you're asking quite so often. So what you're asking for is is to, to put that condition on the project and not have the deck go over, which it does anyway. But besides that, so you're looking for the honor system for when staff looks all this up, Mr. Kruger comes back with his report that they're going to go ahead and take care of this without us having to come back and look at it. Is that what you're saying? Okay, I, I, what I'll do then to make that very clear, I'll add to that, staff will report to the Planning Commission the number of feet, or the number of the... And, that, and, that and then what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Just what, report it to us. We'll know if somebody's lying. That's all. not going to lie. But, well, but, I've but, had people come back. We had people come back and say, there's no erosion in 100 feet. Physically impossible. And I'm and, right. And so, and so Vice Chair Mazza, this is exactly what I was talking about. I, I, I never said you guys couldn't condition stuff to make sure staff verifies it. What I hear you saying and, and, and is that saying you want this hundred year erosion study, but if that erosion study comes to a conclusion that you do not think is, is accurate, which I'm not positing or commenting on, on the veracity of now, all of a sudden that, that, that approval is no longer valid. And no, I'm not saying have. that. I'm saying it is approved by us. If staff, okay. if Adrian comes back to us in four so, months and said, we decided there was no erosion, right. my only feedback to that is you're a liar, okay? <laughs> or your consultant's a liar. That's so, That doesn't stop the project. That doesn't do anything. 
what happens if it comes back and it says that the, it's going to be it's built on sand and it's going to erode 50 feet in the next quarter hour if it comes back with that they shouldn't build the damn house no no what happens to the effectiveness of our of our uh, resolution right. that's that's exactly what the the issue i was i was i was trying the effectiveness to effectiveness of our resolution is we're approving this house with that condition okay yeah. my, now, my own here's my own dilemma is i could on the one hand i could say we can walk out of here tonight and just safely say it's got to be set back 15 feet and that'll that'll probably cover any circumstance but I would like to be able to say, well, you do the erosion calculation, and you, if you find out it, it's not that bad, maybe you could have it closer than the 15 feet. So it's a trade-off between do you take your chances and wait even longer to get it done? These, or, yeah, these folks are already five years into this. Okay, it's and fun. some people are 16 years into projects. I got that, Commissioner Maza, or Vice Chair Maza, but we're here right now. Let's let's take a vote. Let's get these folks on their way to, to getting their home fixed. Okay, well, well, my motion, as I understand it, and you correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> and I'm ready for amendments, gives them what they want with one, ex well, with no exceptions. It gives them what they want. Now, if staff if they come back and say, as Craig said, it's going to erode 40 feet in the next 100 years, no. is that is that better than us saying, well, let's put it off until you do the erosion study? No, well, let's move it along. So I trust staff enough to, to come back and say it's six inches or it's eight inches or whatever it is, okay? That's why I moved it from five feet to four feet. Because it gives them more room. They you know, I just just from a practical matter, I think you'd be a lot better off picking a line and not worrying about anything else because the additional report is is not going to do anybody any good and is only going to cause problems. Um, well, I'll, and, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Number one, it's required, okay? It's required. Yeah. It is, there's no variance that says you don't have to do something that the Coastal Act requires, okay? Actually, as far as actually, studies all and of, all that stuff. All of, the, all of those requirements in 10D have to do with the change from a 50 foot set, 100 foot setback to a 50 foot setback. A variance under, uh, uh, overrides all of that you can make a variance to say whatever you wanted to say so it's not really well, true that's not that's going to happen that's not well, gonna may happen. not to happen i'm just correcting your fact you're, you're simply to saying that it's required it isn't a variance overrides that uh if, if you want to grant a variance, a variance varies a rule it doesn't eliminate it okay john Okay, uh, I'll, I'll make a motion. No, no, let me let me let me add some motion. Thing. Vice Chair Maza, you've got your point. Let Commissioner Hill make a, a motion well, here. If, if he wants to finish his motion, I I, I don't know if you did well, you get it out. I'm him? waiting for somebody to give me a reason to amend it. I believe the way my motion is written, they build the house exactly the way it's presented legally. I think Patrick's pointing out the condition subsequent stuff is problematic. No, it's not a condition. It's a report. The only subsequent report is it can come back at one inch or 50 feet. That's the, done by a geologist. Okay. It's still approved. Yeah. I mean, Tyler, do, do we have any idea of what our margin for error is there? And once again, I, I know Commissioner Jennings said if it's going to, you know, erode 50 feet in the next 45 minutes, obviously, you know, I, you know, because, because, you know, Commissioner Hill, yes, obviously everyone here is, I think, well aware. So I'll, I'll keep this brief of the issues with this, that it is, it requires a, it's a, a condition subsequent that you must do an act and then staff will then interpret that act and apply this four foot setback to that subsequent act that we do not know the what what the result of, of that is. You're right. If it's four inches or tw or eleven inches, is it workable? Probably. But once again, that's why I wanted to check with Tyler in terms of what is our margin for error. If it's if it's hey if it, oh if we find out this is three feet, then the house is no longer legally being able to build. 
where basically the, the applicant is going to start arguing with the city and say, hey, I got an approval. I'll just change it a little bit here, a little bit there. And now all of a sudden we're in a, a big quagmire. Why? Why are we in a quagmire? We've, we've approved a house that's legal under the Coastal Act. It's a okay. state act determined by a required Coastal Act. Let, let, me see, let, me, let me see just a, a question for you to see if I clarify things. We approve the house that says go back and make a report and come back and, and the report isn't going to change anything. We've already approved it. And Mr. Kruger says, you know what? I'm retiring. I'm going to go to the Bahamas. The hell with it. I'm not going to write a report. And nobody writes a report. What happens then? And they have not, they have not fulfilled the conditions of the project. Uh -huh. Well, it is a condition, then, but it's just a condition to write a report regardless of what the report says. No, the, the, no. The, uh, the, what I'm proposing is that they follow the law, they follow the LIP, which requires a erosion study, requires everything else uh, uh, in that whole just, section hey, just get to based the point. on the erosion line. It's not 50 feet from anything other than the erosion line, okay? That's the only thing you can do it from. Okay. Let me say, if I could, real quick. If I could, real quick. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Just it. Go ahead, Mr. Eaton. Oh, so just to clarify, so what you're saying is they do the study because they were supposed to for the code, right? But even if it comes back and they can't meet the setback that the thing requires them to do, you're still saying this project is approved as is. They just needed to do the study. That's what you're saying, right? Oh, I'm saying that they need to, they have a four foot variance from the. Okay, so the, the only problem with that is there could be a drastic change if there's some analysis that comes back. Now you have a different house than what you're looking at tonight. So if you're saying there's a drastic change, there's something wrong. We have our chairman I, saying, I, saying, I, saying uh, I'm not a geo, I'm not a geo. Wait, so. wait, wait, wait. Come out. Mr. Eaton, go ahead. No, I'm just I'm not saying there is or there isn't. I'm not a geo expert. The this project was reviewed by our geo experts uh and and determined to meet the factors of safety required in that section. So uh well, factors of safety have nothing to do with it. Nothing. Zero. Okay. Yeah. What I'm saying yeah. is, so if this study comes back and they and they need a, this is hypothetical, right? They need a 10 foot setback, okay? More than what they have now. This house is going to be drastically different and it's not going to, it's going to change the whole resolution. So it doesn't really, I don't know, Adrian, what do you think? I don't think that's ever been done before. It's been done this, hundreds of times. So I, hold on. No, we let's, haven't. Let's, let's, uh, <laughs> so. I, I I am in agreement with uh, uh, Commissioner Maza. I, I the that that report is a requirement of the LIP. That report should have been submitted as part of this application, uh, and maybe it was. We're just not aware. We don't have Lauren here. Uh, in any event, uh, we heard from the project engineer, and he doesn't have any issues with the condition. And uh, I also agree that the house is supposed to be designed in a way that it will, you know, it will not be affected by any any um, uh, forces beyond the initial 100 years. So it's the 100 year lifespan of any building. Um, and so this would be consistent with that all around. Uh, I don't think we're looking at something that will change the house drastically like everyone thinks uh, so I, I do have a suggested condition of approval and and uh, uh, if everybody's okay with it then then uh, we can just kind of move on um, here's the condition prior to plan check submittal the applicant slash property owner must submit an erosion study in compliance with LIP section 10.4 d2 and to the satisfaction of CD geotechnical staff, the house and deck must be at least four feet from the bluff retreat line. Uh, staff must report the finding of the study to the planning commission. Uh, and then the second condition is that the deck shall not exceed uh, beyond the erosion line. I'll totally accept that. It's 
we we do these kind of things all the time, even though we don't think we do. We say the road's got to be this wide or that wide, and somebody didn't measure it. We okay. do it all the time. So that's my motion, unless somebody has something they want to add. Well, can I clarify, Adrian? You said the language you just gave was the house and deck can't be closer than something, and th those are two different things. So, what what you just read didn't make sense to me. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Um, th there was a statement from uh, Commissioner Mazza that uh, he did not want the deck yeah. to extend beyond the the erosion line. The and part so a, cl a clause earlier than that you said. Uh, uh, yes. And so, so the house and deck must be at least four feet from the bluff retreat line. The house or the deck, which? And the, the house. Oh, sorry, the house and the deck. Correct. So, if the if the deck if the if the deck can't be more than four. No, feet. no, I I understand what Craig's saying. Yeah, Adrian, you got to change that a little. Uh, the house may not be more than four feet. From the erosion line, the deck may not exceed the erosion line. Got it. Okay. Okay. That gives them the deck. A four foot the other deck. One gives Got them it. where the house is. It's Got it. A four foot deck adequate. I don't know. I I I, I have an alternate uh, thought, but just maybe this helps in with John's motion. I don't know. By analogy, we have that language about cultural resources that says you go ahead with the project if you happen to uh, find artifacts then something changes he's you're sort of saying something similar here you're saying we go ahead with the project and if you do that study and it turns out to be worse than you think then something changes and that's really not applicable because when you have that in the cultural resources area all that happens is the project stops yeah and and then mitigation takes place and then the project goes forward again in this situation you can't just say okay you're no longer yeah. legal uh, right. no and the reason i'm making this motion is because i want them to get started now if we go and say because it is required you do this study if we say continue the item until they bring the study back and they come back and say six inches okay do john don't try we okay. get your point we got it okay so we have a we have a Motion from A.D. Fernandez over to Vice Chair Maza in so many words, right? And who we don't have a second yet. I'm I'm not comfortable with with this condition subsequent stuff. It's, I I would propose an alternate motion, but uh, well, do you want to make an amendment to this motion? No, because it's a different approach. I would basically well, say I... I would just say set the house back 15 feet and let the deck come out whatever needs to come out there and cantilever if need be but but put it in a place that's clearly safe and and we're done and we walk away we don't have this outstanding um you know and, and what the deck that they wanted there is more than four feet anyway right it's oh yeah of course so okay, what, what's how the far is the house back now how far is the house back now on their plans it looks about 15 feet. Yeah. The, how, can, how can it? It should I, I mean, look like I don't see. Um, how, big, how big is the deck? The I deck is 14 dimension. feet. Okay. Craig, uh, the deck's 14 feet. Um, what what I was liking was the, to take the 15 feet that, that we get in the code here, that the, that's the sort of a limit of something safe. For the house and take the the deck can't come out somebody had some language about how it relates to the front of the bluff the deck can't exceed the uh the bluff bluff edge something the, like uh, the and, red line whatever you call it adrian my, my sense is that's pretty close to what they've got and they can yeah, that's that's okay that's to me that's within a foot or two what they have i uh, i'll accept that motion um Adrian, uh, it, it still leaves all, the question. All you need to do is change that motion to 15 feet and, and put in the language about um, I'm the, sorry, 15 about exceeding the bluff edge. 15 feet from where? Yeah. The bluff top edge. Of, the, top, of, top of bluff. Top of bluff. Top of bluff retreat line, which is what the Coast, Coastal uh, Act requires. The, then, wait a minute. No, wait, why not just a second? I think you're talking about two different things. I'm talking about they must do the study. 
uh, and then are, everything else is based on the line determined by that study. Okay, I, 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 I certainly have had your point driven home, but, but I think what Mr. Hill is saying yeah. is that he just wants to go 15 feet back from the top of Bluff, forget the report, and right. we're done. Is that right? right? Well, I cannot do that because I can't violate the. That, that's easy. Like, and and we I don't cannot, need to be unanimous. We don't need to be unanimous. We don't maybe, need to be maybe what I need to say is 15 feet back and. And like John says, do the report, but at least at that point, we have the expectation that we're we're clear of whatever they're going to find, likely. Yeah, you're saying the same thing I'm saying. I'm just saying that we're required to determine the setback from the erosion line. That's what we're required to do in all cases. Uh, I'm sorry, gentlemen, to my mind, you are not saying the same thing. Yeah, no, I we're not Craig, saying the same thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, Adrian, right. can you I'm phrase not it? entirely crazy. Can you phrase it? <laughs> Craig's way, and I'll see if I can go along with it. I think what Craig is saying is that the the foundation of the main house can be can be put in place 15 feet back from yes. the top of the bluff yeah. without regard to what the report says. That that number. You know, what I hear, what I hear you saying, uh, John, is that the report has to come first. And the ha and the foundation has to be placed some four feet or whatever it was from uh, whatever the erosion. I am uh, saying all was. I'm saying is, and I hope Craig understands this. The Coastal Commission, the Coastal Act, and our LIP considered setbacks from bluff at the erosion line. That's what they use as the definition. Okay. But what are you calling the erosion line? But John, the ocean John, line is the hundred-year study, which is absolutely required. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We get that. We got that. So uh, I, I was, I, I'm not going to uh, second John's motion there, I'll, but I'm going to certainly invite Commissioner Hill to make a motion. <laughs> so just, just that we're clear, we have uh, a side plan sheet A dash two point It shows the bluff line, and again the deck. The deck is 14 feet wide, and yep. so the house is clearly more than 15 feet away. So, is the motion just to go with staff recommendation? Mm. Is that? Oh, yeah. I was, was going to say, was, yeah. I would not yeah. vote for that kind of stuff. You know, just make okay, stuff. John. Okay, we get it. Can't we? Can we define this the way it's supposed to be defined? It's not going to change the project. But the thing is, is when, as I've been looking at this, everything is already far enough back. There's no, we're not encroaching on anything. We're not, we're not at top of slope with, with the deck. The deck is behind top of slope or your erosion yeah. retreat line, whatever you're calling it. How do you know that? Because I'm looking at the plans. It's not on there. Yes, it, it is. is. It says bluff line. Uh, if you look at sheet A 2.0 of the, left hand corner down at the bottom of the drawing it says bluff line and it points to a line which and runs... that was written by an architect who did not consider and staff did not consider the requirement for erosion study okay bluff line is different than the erosion line the erosion line is what is what happens in the future the bluff line is what is there now and all requirements of the lip I get that. I get that. You don't okay. have to tell me. So, again. Craig, are you really going to argue over what's required in the in the LIP and say let's ignore that over six or eight inches? Are you really going to do that and have this go to coastal and have them lose? Why well, would it go to coastal unless you you and your buddies decide that it's no good? <laughs> well, That's the reason it's to go to coastal because you'll talk to your friends. And do some ridiculous, horrible thing to these people. That's well, the only reason that'll happen. I am trying to pass this, gentlemen. Let's I am trying to get this passed so they get what they want. Okay, let's and go back. Fight over six inches. Okay, so yeah. we'll go back. And refuse to follow the the law, which you always do. I, I need to have a two point zero explained to me because people are saying there's a fourteen foot wide deck. I see on this what looks like a ten foot wide deck that's. Right okay. up here, Craig. Look at, at the at the the measurement lines at the top of the drawing. Yeah, uh, is where it says building line of existing house, yes. and then beneath that it says ten foot 
and that measures the distance between the raised deck there. And then there's the extra four foot on the side. So that's the, the, the 10 foot line indicates what the, pardon me, the existing house is compared to the deck. The extra four foot is the is the line to the proposed house that gives you the 14. I, I don't see four feet anywhere. So yeah, she on the top. Sheet A dash two point one. Oh, I'm looking at two point zero. Yeah, so am I. Two point one. Two point one is the first floor plan, and that okay. gives oh, you yeah. that gives you the dimension of the deck. It is fourteen feet. There and is, to yeah. be clear, I also took a measurement, and I, the slope analysis isn't in this report. I took a you know unofficial measurement from where the top of bluff appeared on the slope analysis, which on the survey would be a little little more accurate. And in the staff report, I do mention fifteen and a half feet for the house foundation. From the from the by, by, by that by that rationale, the deck uh, ten feet wide is comes out still short five feet from the top of slope. Right, it's five feet back from the top of slope. That's what you're saying. No, so the, the the deck is right at the edge of the top of slope. So yeah, the house like the house is ten feet back from the edge of the deck, right? So the ten it's not fifteen feet back. It's drawn no, as ten it, feet it, back. It, it, fourteen feet. Back. It's fourteen feet so, back. So can I ask why, rather than do it according to the Coastal Act, we're arguing over a foot? And and putting these people in jeopardy? No, no. C Commissioner Hill came through with a 15 foot mark. Let's take that and pass it. The the question is, Craig. Question to you: Why are you ignoring the erosion line? I I, I don't want to ignore it. I, I and do why don't you make your motion from the erosion line? Wow, are you dictating to another commissioner? No, I'm asking, asking a on. question. Whoa, 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 I'm whoa. asking a question. Let, let 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 me clarify my thinking here. I I do think it's important to do that required study. I did think we were getting to some place where we could say, here's a plan that can work. You do need to do the study, but um, you know, if it comes out at with any reasonable result, you're done. And you you'd only have to come back if it was catastrophic in some way. So I don't know. What you guys don't understand, what you guys don't understand is when they get through grading and they do all this work, this thing's gonna be tight. And it's you're like I said, it'll be at 95% because that's what they're going to be made to compact this thing at. And they'll be lucky to plant a plant without an electric hammer to get some kind of a any kind of a ground cover on the ground to take care of it. Because that's code. You got to put something on it, uh, Vice Chair. No, you don't. Right. You have I mean, to do Commissioner that. Smith, we, we do understand that, that structurally that that's not the question. The question is what is legal and what is precedent. And yeah. what if we say yes yeah. here, then we have to say yes to the next guy. No, the, no, 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 no. That's not. That's not even an issue, but the, what is an issue is, are you going to fix a line now, whether you get a report later on or not, if the line that actually gets built is dependent upon the result of that report, that hypothetical report that you're asking to come in, now you've got the condition subsequent, now you've got the problems yeah, that yeah. Tyler and everybody else are talking about. So you got a choice, you either fix the line and say, look, this is good enough, or you say no, 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 no. Let's let's get the reports done. Let's go back. Let's well, continue this item. For another Craig, I, if there's no way, if there's no way to split the baby here, then I think we have to do. Right? We have to do what John says. If it's required, we we can't just blow it off. And that's what we're doing. And and we're not. And and Craig, we have a difference between Dennis who says, hundred years of rain won't change anything," and me who says maybe it's a couple inches. Okay? Well, it, 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 but it, it, it's not nothing. And it is required, and it doesn't take any time on their construction. Okay, but the, but the problem is, you guys are, are just a second. Hold on, hold on, hold ahead. on. Sorry. If you say that, then what you're saying is, we we are not going to do. Do you want to do the condition subsequent thing, or are you abandoning that as well? Because if you're abandoning that as well, and that's fine, we need to continue this item and move on. No, we don't. Adrian read a. Perfectly legal motion. The motion says basically your setback is dependent upon the bluff top erosion line. It is, as Craig's motion was, I think 15 feet. Okay. And all that has to happen is staff has to report to us what that number was. 
We did it on, um, which oh, we never got a record on. John, John that, do, you do you remember see? Howdy's hamburgers? Wait, we said wait, Howdy's wait, wait. hamburgers is fine if it doesn't have a roof on it. That I, I, it, then, if that's what you're saying, then I have completely misunderstood your emotion because I understood your emotion to be that wherever placed is dependent upon. I, I missed all that, but I'll repeat it. Again. Um, we lost him. His internet went silent. Okay, but our our. The, this is why I don't understand all this time. waste of time. But Hang on, I, I, we want to make sure. Is Christian the James law there? requires. The law requires. You know, no, no, don't, back. don't, not again, not again. No. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I want to hear. Wait, things. I want to hear from Mr. Donegan because, as a legal point, you're saying <laughs> if we do this, we've got our hands full. So my first point was to make sure Commissioner Jennings is there. I am not saying that a condition subsequent is illegal. I am saying it is a potential recipe for disaster because we are I'm not, we are basing I'm, we are basing our our and you're, may, maybe maybe I don't fully understand the delta I between what this what this report can and can, can come back with. I, I don't just dis, I don't disagree with you. I don't I'm not saying it's illegal. I'm just saying it is a significant problem because it will it it will change the project that we are supposed to be looking at. I don't think there's anybody here who believes, not one person, who believes it's going to change the project. Dennis says there's no erosion. Okay, he's supposedly an expert. Nobody here has said there's significant erosion from weather on that manufactured slope. Nobody has said that. Nobody expects, with a giant retaining wall in front of this, to have this study come back and say, oh, it's going to erode 12 feet. Nobody is saying that. Okay, Nobody's so why do you need it? over a foot? Okay, that's why I'm trying to get this so it can be passed. It can't be passed, in my opinion, when you are now taking every single setback the city has ever done in 32 years oh, and God. say we're basing it on a different standard. Okay, I and, have a motion. I have a motion. The, 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 these, these, the, the argument gets more and more confusing and complicated till it reaches a certain point where it suddenly starts to get more simple. And, and what I think we need to do, we, we cannot disrespect the requirement of the erosion study. I think what we can do, we could continue this item with direction to do the study and come back with a plan that respects that study and what that uh, erosion line is with a house that's the structure is 15 feet back from that with the deck that wherever that deck needs to go. But and Craig, the reason why I then, made then we're bringing it back, but I think there's no way to respect the requirement of that study and at the same time pass something now that we might never see ever again. Absolutely, there is. And this is why I'm making that motion the way I am. I think there's 0.005% chance. That that house will be have to be moved back at all, okay? And we're making them go through the whole process. You are back to a new new hearing and everything else, rather than saying like we do in a lot of cases. This is approved. I've never heard of this. You never heard but, of it? Remember how these when they're supposed to come back and say they don't have a roof? You remember all? There, there's probably yeah, been but, hundreds but, but, in the last year, okay? The road's right. going to be this wide. To so, be so, so your motion is do the study, and if they come back, and if they're at least 15 feet from whatever that top is, then they're fine. No, my motion is, my motion is that they're approved for 15 feet from the legal top of bluff line, which is the retreat line after erosion study. No, no, no. Only time they ever have to come back to us, and that's reported to us, but we have no action on it. John, the problem is we don't know. Oh, let me works. finish. Let me finish. The only time it would have to come we're, back we're really kidding. is if it was a substantial number, it made them move their house back, and they didn't like it, and they applied for a new CDP. And I don't think there's a chance in hell that's going to happen. Okay, for but to change our standards and the standards required, do you? Does anybody here think that's going to be John? Stop. Ah. 
We know. We know what your position is. Okay. Do you do you want to bring it back? I'm trying to not bring it back. You, Greg wants to bring it back. Audio, I, should we move audio, on to that? Break up. I'm getting so much audio break up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting so much audio break up. I can't really hear what. Okay. The well, I, I, now I, go for I, it. You're I good right now. I understand my motion. Getting... If I can't get a second, I will not second one that violates the LIP. Not in something as important as setbacks. Uh, oh, okay. Just let me let me ask you when you make this motion to distinguish between at least, and God knows I am not a geotech, but I think the bluff line is the top of bluff, not the erosion line, that they're not the same. Okay, so when you make your motion, kind of distinguish between those two things. Okay, uh, they, the reason, of course, they're not the same, but, so, but, 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 all the definitions on setback in the LIP are based on the erosion line. Okay, John, I know all that stuff. Way, just, the same way it is wave uprush. It's the same I, I get way. that, except when you started to make your motion the last time before things broke up. You, conf you conflated those two lines together, and I'm just asking you to separate them and appreciate they're different. Okay, Adrian, you want to read it back? The way you said it was what I meant. Okay, sounds good. All right, so here's a condition. Prior to plan check submittal, the applicant slash property owner must submit an erosion study in compliance with LIP section 14.4D2 uh, uh, and to the satisfaction of city geotechnical staff, the house must be at least four feet from the bluff retreat and the deck uh, uh, may not exceed the erosion line. Uh, staff must report the finding of this study to the planning commission. Okay, now Craig wanted, I gave him four feet, Craig wanted 15. If the, audio hadn't, if the audio hadn't broken up. Greg, do you want to make that 15? Uh, I, I didn't hear. I'm not hearing Jeff. So I'm, well, I'm, I know Adrian's motion. That's yeah. If you I, read it again, Adrian, I had said four feet. Craig had said 15. Is that correct? So I, I, I believe Commissioner Craig was saying 15, but that's from the top of bluff as it is now. I think adding 15, which is even more than what the code requires, would certainly post uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, an issue with this project. My point about the 15 was that it would provide, you know, a margin uh, certainly safe and we could put this to bed now. Um, but if we're having to study your thing, I don't know, maybe to say. Well, I'm giving him 11 feet. It's not going to be 11 feet. What you, it sounds like what you're, you're giving them actually may be closer to the edge of the bluff than what they've proposed. They're, and they're losing their deck and everything else. Okay. So well, right right now we've got 14 feet to work with. So, okay, so you go 15, they lose some more square footage in the house. Jesus. But um, okay, so well, we've, we've, we've got a number. Can we, can, we, can we read it again, Adrian, so Jeff can hear it? And then if can we, nobody we got, wants to second it, I'll just walk away. I, I think four feet from the top of the erosion line is quite close still. It's okay. a, given that it says you're supposed to calculate that and then add 10 feet. That's the code. Okay. What number do you and want to add? 14 feet on the plan right now. Okay. okay. Adrian, can you please read my motion again and put 14 feet in instead of four? And that'll be my motion. The, the Again, uh, we talked about 15 feet before. Or changing that to 14 feet is not really solving the issue. Um, uh, is there a telephone number I can call in on? I am getting about half of the audio. Um, is there a phone number? I mean, to, to... Rebecca? Hi, yeah, Jeff. Um, right next to your mute button, in that same yeah. little button in the upper right corner of it, there's a little up carrot thingy. Yeah. Um, if you want to press that and you should see switch to phone audio, it's going to give you instructions on how to call in instead. While you um, can leave your computer on and everything. Uh, microphone array, same as select a speaker, test speakers. Yeah, uh, about audio. halfway down, switch to phone audio. Switch to phone audio, got it. Okay, thank you. No problem. Hey, Adrian, uh, 
whatever it says, whatever they asked for, it's 14 feet, I believe. Use yeah, that number. And, and so my suggestion is that um, if the requirement is four feet from the retreat line, that would be very consistent with how the house is currently designed. If we change the four to 14 feet, then chances are that will have a significant impact on the design. Now, if we want to, in addition to the language that was crafted with the four feet, say that in no case shall the house be less than 15 feet, um, then that would be fine too. Although I think the house is closer to 15 and a half, as Tyler said. Yeah, well, let's... I. I... Let's let's put this baby to bed. I want them to build their house, and I don't want to have another hearing. Okay. So I, I, it, I like I like the no case less than formulation. Okay. Then add the no case less than fifteen feet, and, okay. and let's read it. Can you All hear right. us now, Jeff? Mm, Jeff, the lights here in the office. All right. Let's make sure Jeff can hear. Yes, this. I will wait for Jeff to be able to connect. Oh no! Fuck. You're oh, good. We, hear you. uh, uh, we heard that. We heard that. <laughs> we, we hear heard you. That. Another hot mic. <laughs> Somebody Alex, check for a Chinese. Is there a Chinese balloon over his house? Alex, if he's going to phone, does he have to mute himself on the uh, on the video? We, we Not should make sure he can... you can use the. E either mute will work for him. Well, we heard him, so now. But he can't hear us. <laughs> we we heard you a minute ago, Jeff, but uh, you should, if you hear us, you should be talking, letting us know that you hear us. Mr. Donegan? Yeah, this is this is a, a a bit concerning since Commissioner Jennings was a vital part. And is yeah. there is there a way we can contact him? I know he's trying I'm to my hear out. Can, can you hear me? Yes, uh, we can. Yeah. Okay. Oh, can you hear us? I'm on the phone. Okay. okay. I can hear you. Great. Okay, so let's have Adrian read it and you, Jeff, you let us know if you heard it. Okay, thank you. All right, so here's the condition. Prior to plan check submittal, the applicant slash property owner must submit an erosion control study in compliance with LIP section 14.4 D2 and to the satisfaction of CD geotechnical staff. The house must be at least four feet from the uh, bluff retreat line and uh, the deck uh, may not exceed the erosion line. Uh, staff must report the finding of the study to the planning commission. And uh, there was... Well, I thought, uh, I there, thought you had told us 15 feet was the problem. Right, so there, there was something else that we wanted to add to that. Uh, uh, we wanted to add a sentence that says, and in no case shall the house in, in no case, um, uh, shall the house be closer than 15 feet from the top of bluff? Uh, if we would use the okay. proper to term. Adrian. Sorry, Adrian. Like to use the proper term uh, for the yeah. top. Right. And then because in that you use the term erosion line and bluff retreat line. Those are synonymous, correct? Correct. We can change it so that they are They're both the same. Right. Yes. Okay. Uh, Don't you Adrian. change it. Let me get this clear before we vote. Uh -huh. you're, not, you're using you're using the retreat line, not top of bluff, correct? For, 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 for the, the second, for, for the, the 15, 15 foot setback yes. is from the top of bluff. Why is that? Is that, I, that, that, that that's, that's what you measure is. everything from. Correct. And, and and that genuflex to Commissioner Hill's concern that he does not want the house closer than 15 feet to the top of bluff. So that's so that, that that second part is 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 how we when once again sorry commissioner I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Okay, that, is, uh, that, that is what I heard from you. Before and, and, I, and then before Vice Chair Maza, the, the, the other one, so those two things can operate in sync. 
Yeah. That's that is what Adrian it tried to effectuate. You you want it, you always want it measured from the bluff retreat line, which is Commissioner where Hill is saying, I understand that he wants it, but he also wants a additional, I think, protective prophylactic measure, whatever you want to call it, that says, and no, and in no instance shall the house be 15, shall be within 15 feet of the top of bluff. Yeah. Okay, question. I, I think those uh, how, can, how can it John, be? John, John, hang on. Commissioner Jennings. So you uh, have said then that the deck cannot extend beyond the erosion line, not the top of rough line, the erosion line. That's what you said, Adrian, right? That's what you meant? Yes. Uh, the 14 foot setback would be from the erosion line or, or retreat line, um, both synonymous. Which is required. So, yeah, so, oh, so yeah, Commissioner Jennings, the answer to your question is 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 yes, that the the deck cannot extend past the erosion line, as oh, modified okay. by by Mr. Fernandez. And we're okay. You we got Steve Kent, Steve Kent, and uh, Mark. I uh, know. Uh, I made a motion. Uh, we're we're done discussing with with. I'm sorry. Who made you chief? <laughs> well, who made you chief? <laughs> yes, he's you asked. Don't, you don't cut off discussion. Uh, I would like to ask uh, Steve Kent whether or not he sees any horrible flaws with us or has any reaction at all. I was going to ask, but thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, so, I my big concern is what is the line? Or can, if we're going to make this motion, can we say the top of the bluff line is the line, the green line on sheet A two point oh? No. We do, we do it. We can't tell you absolutely because the study that was required hasn't been done. Well, I know at the beginning of this process, we we had to ask our surveyor to determine that line. And if you look at the survey sheet, that's where that line came from. But the, he did not do a study because he's not qualified and requires a geologist. Yeah. Now, the, it, my it, question it's, to it's Mr. Kidd is, can I ask you a question? Do you want this continued to do all this? Or do you want us to, I'm trying to make a motion to pass your project with the assumption that the erosion line is a very small amount of space. And you can go on with your thing. Otherwise, we can reschedule, wait for your report, and do it all over again. I'm trying to make you, if you believe that that erosion line is substantially different than how you know inches then you're going to tell me no uh it depends on what you believe yeah hang I'm, up. Trying to, I'm trying to make a motion right that, right but but but, but you can't you can't pose questions like that so we understand yeah. your motion yeah. mr fernandez has articulated the motion yeah. and the, the, the applicant can say yes or no but you can't condition and say you're only going to say yes if you believe X, Y, and Z, and you're only going to say no if you believe A, B, and C. Let's well, leave that out of here. Whatever he wants. I, I'm sorry. Sure. Say whatever you want, Mr. Kent. My big concern is I I don't know where that line is. I, I, I then we have no choice but to continue, and I, and it, so it's your opinion on no, how much you think I, it's going to be. I, yeah, but you. I, I know the bluff isn't going to erode much. I, we all agree on that, but we're talking about a line that I don't know where it exists. So, and this is this line is what the house is being measured from. I know, and you need to determine that. They did. It's no, on. they did not. There is no. Yeah, gentlemen. Yeah, gentlemen. We, 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 I think I think we all are clear on each and everyone's position. I don't think that's that, that that's that's in in dispute. I think that we 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 have talked this. The Mr. Kent has clearly articulated his his thoughts. I don't want to cut him off, but I don't think we 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 don't want to badger. We, we we do not want to keep asking the same question over and over again until we get a different answer. You know, there there is of course only four of you here tonight. Once again, Commissioner Peak did recuse because he would he did not you know get up to speed on on, on all of the uh, previous hearings. That is not dispositive for future hearings. So I don't know if that's an option, but I'll, I will leave it at that. Thank you, Chair. No, I only have one question. Thank you. Do I have a second? 
I think as we I think we got there with Adrian that I could I, I could second that. Okay. Can we call the question? Can I ask a question, please? Yeah. yeah. The, the I've got the stuff that Adrian read. There's a missing part, uh, and that is apart from uh, because what you're doing is amending the staff recommendation. Staff recommendation goes forward as uh, modified by uh, Tyler Eaton. Uh, in terms of the reduction as to the uh, uh, neighborhood uh, uh, neighborhood standard calculation, is that is that part of it of the motion we're making? Yeah, I, my intention I was I'll accept your friendly amendment. Okay. Are you going to accept it, Craig? I I don't understand. What's the amendment? Oh, the amendment is we're doing what staff recommends on those other little items. Okay. Yeah, the square yeah. footage what, what, what was slightly off. It, it, it's the three it's conditions that Mr. Eaton. Yeah, yeah. And, no. the, and the post, right? You guys yeah. are doing yeah, with the no, post. I accept that. Okay, so can we vote? Let's call a roll call, Ms. Evans. Vice Chair Mazza? Yes. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Commissioner Jennings? For the interest of helping these people out, yes. Chair Smith. Oh, Jesus, these people need it. Yes. Motion carries. Ah. <clears throat> That's our cutoff time. Okay. Um, I don't know what are we, what are we doing here? We yeah. have sea level drive. Five D. We've got, well, 10, 10. Is there any reason why we should move forward with this? Because this is a 12 hour project. We can go. Right, I'll this. make a motion. I move that we uh, accept staff's recommendation. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We, <laughs> we, wait, staff after moves, we have a hearing. We have to have a hearing. Hang on, hang on, yeah, hang on. So staff, I, I apologize just for the records clear. Chair Smith, you were looking for a potential continuance. I don't believe you got one, so we should call the if, if, if there if, if there is no appetite for for a continuation, we need to go throughout the process of having a staff report, public hearing, et cetera, et cetera. I'm gonna I'm gonna move that we continue this item to uh, whether a date uncertain uh, or a date uh, a specific date, Adrian. I think this is this is a matter that needs to be heard by the yes. whole commission. I agree. I'm gonna vote no on that. On. So we have we have a motion to continue, and then uh, Mr. Fernandez, do we do we want to do uncertain? Do we have a date certain? And and then we'll yeah. Um, if we continue the item, we would like to continue the item to the April third meeting. April third. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. April third. It is. No, it isn't. We have a motion. No, it isn't. Oh, we have no. Have no. Motion and a second. I, and do I have a second? I thought, it, apologies, Chair Smith. I, I thought you seconded it with the. I thought I did too, but I second it. Gotcha. And would you like me to call the roll? Please. Uh, Commissioner Jennings? Yes. Chair Smith? Yes. Commissioner Hill? No. Let's hear it tonight. Vice Chair Mazza? No. <clears throat> You're not going to go anywhere tonight. If 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 it gets too long, we can pause it at that point and continue it from there. But maybe it won't get that long. Yeah, all right. Yeah, we all know better now. Why wouldn't you want to continue this? Because we want to okay. hear it. It's pretty. Clear. No, you want to blow them out of the water and come up with some ridiculous reason. So we no, should come continue. All right, let's go. It, it, come on, let's go. Let's not do that. Motion. Let's get, Let's move on. There's a motion for continuance. It failed. So I believe that the next item on the agenda, Chair Smith, is. 5D. 5D, Coastal Development Permit Number 05-081, Variance Number 09-023, and 16-024, and Site Plan Review Number 06-32, an application for the construction of a new single-family residence and associated development. Staff report, please. Yes, good evening. Uh, next slide, please. 
The subject parcel is located on the west side of uh, West Sea Level Drive uh, in the middle of Pacific Coast Highway to the north and the uh, Pacific Ocean to the south. The subject parcel is one of five vacant lots in line on the same side of the street. Development applications uh, for the subject parcel and the parcel immediately to the north uh, were submitted by the same owner in 2005. Uh, in 2006, uh, since uh, 2006, the former owner and the current owner um, have been working to satisfy the fire department requirement for adequate access on sea level uh, drive from uh, Broad Beach Road to the community's entry gates. Uh, the Planning Commission recently approved a project to widen this portion of the of West Sea Level Drive and construction is expected to start this summer, which um, allow this application to uh, move forward. Uh, next slide. Uh, Encino uh, Creek is located just west of the subject parcel. According to a biological assessment prepared uh, for the subject parcel, a blue line drainage uh, supporting uh, degraded uh, riparian habitat expands to the parcel's western property line. The proposed project is located approximately 40 feet from the creek bank, and the uh, residences, uh, the, the residences require few modification will extend to the westerly property line. The project's required few modification overlaps with uh, the required few modification of existing surrounding residences. The proposed project does not include any development within ESHA, uh, and this include um, the few modification of the proposed residence. Uh, at the uh, last planning commission hearing uh, for this item, the planning commission requested that other alternatives be considered to uh, maximize the encroachment into the creek and, and uh, continue the item to allow the applicant additional time to explore these other alternatives. Uh, the applicant provided a response to the planning commission summarizing the proposed project is uh, similar to other development in the area. And since the project does not have any direct uh, impacts on ESHA, it did not need to be revised. Uh, a letter from the project biologist states that the house could move about five feet further away from the creek per uh, septic system designer, but this would not provide any more protection of biological resources. Uh, staff changed uh, its recommendation to, uh, to, uh, from approval of the project to denial because of the applicant's admission that the house can be recited further away from the creek. Um, the LCP qualifies impacts to ESHA as both uh, construction in ESHA and construction in ESHA buffer. In, uh, the LCP requires a 100-foot buffer from the creek and uh, its riparian habitat. Increasing the setback would bring the project closer into compliance, and more importantly, it would reduce impacts to ESHA uh, and ESHA buffer. The staff uh, confirmed with the City uh, Environmental Health Administrator that reducing uh, the number of bedrooms and our, um, the basement would also reduce the dispersal area and set back to the dispersal area respectively. As the Planning Commission uh, directed the applicant to explore other alternatives that would increase the setback to the creek, and these alternatives exist, staff is recommending that the Planning Commission uh, deny the project. Uh, next slide, please. Besides the two variances uh, for construction within ESHA buffer and the septic system setback to the creek, the project complies with the development code. Uh, the proposed development was designed to comply with the required development area. The required development for the parcel is 25% of the lot area, which is 1,738 square feet. And the proposed development is 1,719 square feet. Uh, next slide. The proposed dispersal field is located 89 feet from the creek, uh, which is less than the required 100 feet uh, setback established by the LCP, uh, which is why a variance uh, is uh, required uh, for a reduction in that setback. Uh, next slide. 
to date, uh, we have not received any requests from neighbors for primary view determinations. Um, staff is recommending that the planning commission deny the proposed project. Uh, provided the project uh, can be revised to increase ESHA buffer uh, uh, setback and uh, thus uh, reduce ESHA impacts. Uh, and that concludes my presentation and I'm available for questions. Okay, uh, disclosures. Chair Maza or Vice Chair Maza. Uh, only that I heard it last time and visited last last time i did not have visit this time commissioner hill uh yeah i revisited this time because uh well just to see what if anything had changed and the stream has running water in it now and there's evidence of storm erosion uh i have no means of comparative measurement but my impression was that the creek bed is now wider than it was the last time by a foot or two um i also had some email with adrian um about the um the house further up on that same street closest on the small lot closest to the highway uh because it looked to me just not that this is dispositive but that the the setback from the creek with that house might be worth discussing uh, on a map to me it's pretty clearly 75 feet from the blue line um adrian said the applicant records from that house say 67 feet from the blue line um though it's difficult to measure because there's a culvert there etc so um nonetheless that that's that's new data that nobody else had so that's my disclosure commissioner jennings um i spoke with uh, uh don schmitz the uh, applicant representative on friday i believe for about a half an hour we basically went over uh, his analysis of uh, of the staff report. I too spoke with Mr. Schmitz just about tonight, and and uh, uh, really nothing. I I believe the consultants are very important here, so I I didn't learn anything different than the last time. So we have. Um, uh, well, I think Mr. Mr. Schmitz, right? Yes, we have Don Schmitz representing the applicant team, and he will be followed by um, Elizabeth Lynch and Pat Healy. Go ahead, Mr. Schmitz. Uh, before we start the clock there, thank you for getting the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, but before we start the clock, uh, Chair Smith, I, I just really do need to express some some dismay over the due process aspects here. Uh, we're we're forging ahead. Uh, we do not have a full commission staff with the city's attorney's office. Uh, uh, ostensibly debriefed uh, uh, Commissioner Peak and uh, admonished him to review the previous hearing. And and now Mr. Maza, Commissioner Maza, or Vice Chair Maza, has declared he's prepared to deny the project uh, before he uh, uh, hears the. Uh, the matter tonight so this is this is disconcerting to me but i I, uh, I object this this attack on me i have an open mind and i always do and this should count if you want to you want to give speeches it counts on your time have we started the clock yet uh, chair smith I, I can't see the clock because we have I can't our... see the clock either. I, I have not started the clock yet. Okay, so let's um, let's go ahead and get started here. Uh, for the record, Don Schmitz, on behalf of the applicant, next slide, please. So uh, please note that this matter was before the commission uh, in February of 2022, uh, and staff was recommending approval. Now, staff will tell you they can certainly change their minds on this. But we would say that that needs to be based upon some relevant information, scientific information. But uh, next slide, please. Let's show also that uh, back in February 20, 20, uh, 2022, the staff rightfully reported to the commission that there are no direct impacts to ESHA, which were expected from the proposed project. And there still aren't. Next slide, please. So uh, after deliberation, the Planning Commission continued the item to date uncertain to give us the uh, an opportunity to reduce potential impacts to biological resources. That's clear. Next slide. 
So all properties on West Sea Level Drive are blanketed by the stream repair and setback. There's existing precedent to approve similarly situated projects. Next slide, please. So the permitting history and status, as you can see here, there's a number of different homes to the south that have coastal development permits. There's one up at the far end, and there's several which are pending. This is the subject lot. Next slide, please. So now staff is, is pointing out to you that the consulting waste engineer, John Yaroslavsky, said that, in fact, if we reduce the bedroom, we could move the house five feet closer to the street. Next slide, please. What's not included in the report that they just gave you is that they don't uh, include the entire letter from Mr. Yaroslavsky, that we have a very high level, efficient and very clean system. Next slide, please. It has two redundant disinfection systems. Next slide. It has a complete uh, ultraviolet disinfection unit. Next slide, please. And it has a chlorination and dechlorination unit. This is a very high quality tertiary water quality system. Next slide, please. So they also don't point out that in the rest of his letter, he goes on to say with the additional treatment and low volume dose distribution to the dispersal area, the system will have no adverse impacts on surrounding water bodies in Diarrow Creek or groundwater. No impacts whatsoever. Next slide, please. So as you can see here, the septic system we're proposing is some 90 feet away from the, from the actual uh, drainage of the creek. Uh, next door is 95, um, and, and the project that you approved uh, up uh, at the corner is 82 feet set back from the creek. Next slide. So in February, the uh, uh, findings that were before you uh, correctly again stated that there's no way to avoid variance for construction with the stream ESHA buffer. Next slide. There's no way to avoid the variance. Uh, you should also know that we have a very uh, detailed uh, drainage filtration plan that was done by the consulting engineer and reviewed by the Department of Public Works. Next slide. This is designed to comport with section 17.4.2 of the LIP, which specifies that the 85th percentile one hour storm event will be retained and, and clarified. Next slide. Purified, if you will. And so this biofiltration system has been incorporated. So any runoff from the property will be scrubbed before it gets anywhere near that creek. This is just a superficial runoff. Next slide. Staff also includes uh, the one excerpt from the Ford letter, uh, which says that uh, if we eliminated the bedroom, we, we could move the house five feet closer to the street. I was kind of shocked that they only included that part because that was only to queue up his analysis. Next slide, please. Whereupon uh, Mr. Ford, the consulting biologist goes on to, would you go back one, please? where he goes on to say that in my professional opinion, moving the house five or even 10 feet closer to the street would have no quantifiable positive biological benefits to the drainage area. As currently designed, the proposed house will not have any significant impacts to the drainage. There will be no impacts. Next slide, please. We are located some 50 feet from the drainage. The house next door is 42 feet and below that is 44 feet. Next slide, please. So in, now they're saying while the proposed development, they being staff, may not have quantifiable impacts on biological resources, which it will not, the project's ESHA impacts result from new development within 100 feet of the storm ESHA. Therefore, any alternative that would increase the setback with ESHA would further reduce impacts on ESHA. Now, there's no biological impacts, but they say moving it back will improve these non-impacts to the ESHA. Next slide, please. I'd like to show you something. So this is the creek of all creeks in Malibu. This is Malibu Creek. And this is the map that's shut. And this is the Creekside Plaza Shopping Center. And that's the 100 foot buffer. Next slide, please. These are the charging stations, which are located in that parking lot. Next slide, please. These parking stations were approved by the Planning Commission. And why? Because they have absolutely no potential for any sort of biological impact to that ESHA. They're charging stations within an existing parking lot. The motion was made by Commissioner Maza to approve the project. It was voted on affirmatively by Commissioner Jennings and by Commissioner Craig Hill. It was approved unanimously. Placing new development within a setback does not constitute 
additional impacts to ESHA. This is a scientific analysis which needs to happen. And this is exactly what you took into account when you approved these charging stations. Next slide, please. So back in, in 20, uh, 2022, in February, the staff correctly stated that the proposed residence and associated development are located entirely within the disturbed portion of the subject parcel, not ESHA, and the required fuel modification of the residence blankets the site. Next slide, please. LUP policy 3.1 states that existing legally established fuel modification areas required by LA County Fire Department do not meet the definition of ESHA. Next slide, please. This is overlapping fuel modification zones for this neighborhood. It is entirely blanketed with fuel modification from the homes in that area. There is no ESHA in this neighborhood except for the flow line of the creek itself. Next slide, please. So uh, again, back in February, the staff wrote findings for you to adopt that the residents will be recessed into the site's topographical contours and will not be dissimilar in size and height to other residences and structures in the surrounding area. Next slide, please. And they were correct. The applicant is proposing approximately an 1800 square foot new home. You can see that the homes in that neighborhood range from 1,000 square foot to 8,803 square foot. The median size is 2,215 square foot. The applicant is not asking for anything special here. This is gonna be one of the smaller homes within this neighborhood when you look at the averages. Next slide. In regards to height, we're right dab smack in the middle. At 26 feet, the, the heights range from 32 feet down to 15 foot. This is just the average height for this neighborhood at 26 feet. We are identical. Again, we're not asking for anything special here. Next slide, please. So a variance requires that there be special circumstances and that we're not asking for anything special. We're not. And strict application of the zoning ordinance would deprive the property owners of the same development configuration siding enjoyed by other properties in the vicinity with the same zoning and the same constraints. Next slide, please. This is the quintessential aspect of what is an appropriate variance. The nilest argument of just less is always best just really is not what the city has done. Section 4.7.1 of the LIP specifies for ESHA projects, on parcels where all feasible building sites are ESHA, and that's the case here, ESHA buffers shall be 10,000 square foot or 25% of the parcel size, whichever is less. The pad configuration is spelled out in the LCP, and we comply with that, which is exactly what this commission and the city has done over and over again. And 4.7.1 of the LCP goes on to specify that the development must be cited to avoid destruction of the repairing habitat to the maximum extent feasible. We're not touching the repairing habitat at all. So that means we are protecting it and avoiding destruction to the maximum extent feasible. Next slide, please. Zero minus zero equals zero, commissioners. Next slide. If you have zero impacts to the stream and groundwater in, uh, uh, resources in the area from the designed proposal, and there will be zero brush clearance drainage impacts, which has been documented by the city's reviewers, by the consulting uh, septic engineer, and by Andy Ford, one of the uh, most respected biologists here in this part of Southern California. Setback modifications, subtracting that will have exactly zero benefit. Modifying the setbacks of this house from the stream scientifically, which really the substantial credible evidence test is what you have to operate under here. It, it, it's not warranted because there will be no impacts. Next slide, please. Again, zero impacts to the creek minus zero uh, regarding minus setback modifications equals zero benefit. Next slide. So with that, I want to retain uh, the remainder of our time for rebuttal. I've got me at uh, 10 minutes and 42 seconds. So I'd like to stop there and I appreciate it.
Um, and I show you as having four minutes and 16 seconds remaining on your time clock. Um, our next speaker will be Liz Lynch, followed by Pat Healy. If there are other members of the public present in the meeting who wish to provide comment on this item, please click the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen and we'll circle back to you. Um, if you could unmute for Liz Lynch. Hi, I thank you all for all your efforts. I want the commission to think very hard on the fact of the cumulative effect that you will have on this whole area. If you grant one variance or two or three to each one of the five properties that are developing, you will create a massive effect on the ESCA and its surrounding area. Now, 15 variances, if they are granted, they will eviscerate the code. There will be no code. You need to legislate for the public will. And so having said that, you must look that there are requests for variances on the very next lot. The very next lot is smaller. You must also notice that what is happening is these applicants purchased the property in 2019 when it was already restricted. It was restricted in 2003 when the city became a city. You must consider that there is no way they can be arguing that there's any taking because they created their own problem. It was restricted when they bought it. So there's no variances to be granted. They cannot, you can't look at a piece of property and say, ah, I want to put a hotel on that piece of property. Fine, I'll get the variances because they'll give them to me. No, that is not the way that this business should be done. It is not uh, up to any type of legal standards. And you have to look forward and look at the fact that these people have had the time to make some adjustments on this and they have done nothing. They've just submitted a letter that is, I will not discuss what I think of the letter. However, it is the subject of what this gentleman just argued. You cannot go ahead. Now, the, another thing that I want you to consider is the privacy. If you got a two-story building right next to me, I have lost all my privacy. It will square into my bathroom and square into the master bedroom. Furthermore, there will be less light in the area. So actually, if alternative plans were available, which they are, the, account, the applicant has not lived up to the law and made any attempt to uh, submit in any type of uh, altered plans to make them more consistent with the city standards. Thank this you. Oh, thank you very much, Elizabeth. You are at time. Um, at this time, we'd like to hear from Pat Healy, followed by Joe Drummond. Can you hear me? We can. Okay, good evening, commissioners. Um, the Malibu Coalition for Slow Growth supports the staff recommendation for denial. And there are other reasons for denial. The staff report states that the Planning Commission continued the project to give the application applicant a chance to redesign, and the applicant chose not to do so, thereby inviting a denial. The project is one of five substandard developed lots along Ensel Stream. Good planning dictates the cumulative impact of the development of these four, five lots, along with the four previously developed stream properties be taken into consideration to protect water quality, since the creek outfall is into an area of special biological significance. Uh, Don Schmidt, claims that the cumulative impacts of the septics on the stream 
were taken into consideration. If this is true, it, sh it should be reflected in the consultants' reports and staff should verify this. Also, uh, one consultant said um, that the septic um, would most likely not impact the creek. Most likely is not the same as saying it won't have any impact. Um, a basement so close to the creek may not be the best idea because of the potentially high groundwater table. Therefore, before you approve the basement, new groundwater level studies have to be done uh, based this year in 2023 because it was a a good rainy season. Um, we totally disagree with the archaeological assessment that there are no cultural resources on the site. Mr. Schmidt states the archaeologists will monitor only the first three feet of, of the soil removal. What he fails to tell you is the first three feet is fill and any remains or artifacts would be below that. And if if the architect is only monitoring the first three feet, no one would be monitoring the basement. Um, the project is in a designated monarch overwintering site. So the landscaping should consist of, of native drought tolerant bioresistant pollinator plants, including milkweed. Uh, since that's the only plant the endangered monarchs lay their eggs on. Uh, also, there are two coastal live oaks on the site, which should be guaranteed protection. And um, there were two letters from members of the homeowner uh, board, but they were written as individuals and not from the homeowners association. So that doesn't equate to the association's approval. Thank um, you, Ms. Healy. You are at time. At this time, we'd like to hear from Joe Drummond. Hello, Honorable Planning Commission. You can hear me? Yes. Can. Okay. I I just wanted to echo the previous two speakers. I and I'd like to applaud the the planning department for finally denying a variance in for construction in a stream and the septic system dispersal field extending into the hundred foot setback. Of the creek, I know the last the 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 um, the project before this, you were talking about following the law and abiding the codes, and and um, I think variances should also be applied properly, and the the studies completed, such as in landslide areas, you guys never allow the slope stability studies, and you need to make sure those occur. So that's these are basically what I'm trying to say is please follow the codes and 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 don't let this be a cumulative impact on the community here. There's five other projects going as well, so we don't want to continue applying variances for ESHA. Thanks. Thank you. And then we'll return to Don Schmitz for a rebuttal. Thank you. Audio check. Am I working? Yes, you are. Okay, so uh, let me start my clock here. And but before we start the clock, can you put my remaining uh, PowerPoint? Yes. Uh, next slide, please. So again, thank you. Uh, I'd like to respond to the comments. Ms. Lynch uh, is right next to us. You can see we're proposing a, a 1799 square foot. Her house is 3,670 square foot. We're proposing a 26 foot tall house. Her house is 27 feet in height. The average rear yard set, no, oh, I'm sorry. Next slide, please, and next slide. The average rear yard setback uh, uh, that we have is 35 feet. The average rear yard setback for Mrs. Lynch's property is 19 feet. Next slide, please. Uh, the septic system setback that we are proposing uh, is 90 feet. Our, uh, hers is 95 feet. Next slide, please. Uh, the average building setback from the stream, uh, we're proposing 58 foot on average from the stream. Mrs. Lynch's house is 32 feet on average from the stream. 
Uh, and of course, our on-site wastewater treatment system is a state-of-the-art microseptic, extremely clean tertiary water quality system. And we're not certain what type that she has. Mrs. Lynch is living in the proverbial glass house in regards to the casting dispersions on what is being proposed by the applicant tonight. Uh, and if there's questions, by the way, uh, uh, commissioners, uh, John Yaroslavsky is here to address anything as it pertains to the on-site wastewater treatment system. Next slide, please. I would draw your attention again to 4.7.1 of the LCP. On parcels where all feasible building sites are ESHA, like this one, or ESHA, ESHA buffer more appropriately, the development code that kicks in is 10,000 square foot pad, or 25% of the parcel size, whichever is less. We comport with that. That's the design standard. And that we should avoid destruction of the repairing habitat to the maximum extent feasible. We're not touching any repairing habitat. We're consistent with the design standards for a house that is proposed in an ESHA buffer. Next slide, please. So also uh, the in situ uh, letter specifies that there will be no adverse impacts to the water bodies, diurnal creek or groundwater. Next slide, please. And the consulting biologist goes on to say that moving the house five or 10 feet will have no impacts to the ESHA. It will not improve uh, uh, potential impacts to the ESHA because there are none. And that's why we didn't redesign. You would monitor the applicant to go see if you could reduce impacts to ESHA. There are no impacts to ESHA. Next slide, please. So again, zero stream and groundwater impacts, zero impacts to any sort of extra repairing air from brush clearance. Therefore, uh, modifications of the setbacks will have zero benefit. Next slide, please. Remember that already the findings have been written and are amply justified that this project design is consistent with the neighborhood character. This variance is nothing special. Next slide, please. And remember also that to develop anything on this property, you must have a variance. We're proposing a 26 foot tall house. The median height is 26 foot in height. Next slide, please. We're proposing a 1,799 square foot house. The average is actually larger at 2,215 square foot. You know, uh, we are amenable to uh, incorporating milkweed into uh, the landscaping plan. Uh, we're amenable to uh, having the archaeological monitor out there for whatever depth you commissioners feel is appropriate to ensure that we're having no impacts to any sort of archaeological site. But a variance is absolutely necessary to develop anything on this property. We've documented that we're not having any impacts to the Escher or the Escher buffer, and we would urge you to approve the project accordingly. So I appreciate your time and I'm available for any questions that you may have. Oh, and one other thing, I just want to remind you again that uh, uh, Mr. John Yaroslavsky, again, who has been working in this area for uh, many, many decades, is, is probably one of the best experts as it pertains to groundwater and on-site wastewater treatment systems, is available to answer your questions and, and he will tell you what he has put in writing that the on-site wastewater treatment system is currently designed, will have no impacts to the water quality of the creek or the groundwater. So with that, I will close. Thank you. Thank you. And that does conclude our public speakers. Okay, back to us. Chair uh -oh. Smith, apologies, yeah. I didn't okay. want to interrupt. I just wanted to confirm for the record, Vice Chair Mazza, you of course heard all of that testimony with an open mind and in no way have you prejudged this application, correct? I suppose you're asking that question because Don Schmitz accused me of that. Absolutely no. And uh, it's he it's can it's do it every minute he wants to. Thank you very much, Vice Chair Mazza. Apologies for the interruption, Chair Smith. Um, okay, back to us. Do we ever do disclosures? I thought we did, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we did. Yes, we have done disclosures. I have one question for Yaros Mr. Yaroslavsky. Go ahead. Uh, is he open? Uh, Don says that this has absolutely no impact. Since this is a, a, a jurisdictional water area, I forget what they call them, in the ocean, are you saying that this system releases 
zero TMDLs. TMDLs? Total daily load. Um, well, the TMDL is a standard, um, and this does meet the TMDL for Santa Monica Bay. Is that is, is that your question? Well, I'm talking for the special district. The, what do they call it? Uh, yeah, the, yeah. The, um, the the Santa Monica Bay no. is the um, no, impaired we have waterway. Special, we have special districts in Malibu. Yeah, yeah, right. I know. And uh, hey, Santa Monica yes. Bay. Excuse me. I'm sorry. The area is A is B S. The areas of biological uh, special resources area. Right. Yeah. And as I understand that, uh, that allows zero TMDLs release. A TMDL is a total max daily load. So um, a total max daily load is not a thing. It's a, it's a standard. And the standard for the TMDL for this area is Santa Monica Bay. And Santa Monica Bay TMDL we meet, we exceed, we meet the TMDLs, we meet the groundwater, uh, the drinking water standard in that for groundwater. Um, so we, uh, if you're asking if we are putting out water that's gonna cause an impact to any TMDLs that might be in place, the answer is no. We so aren't gonna have if, any impact. If you, if you, would you be allowed under the code to use this water for drinking water in the house? You would not be allowed to use um, any system for drinking water in the house in the state of California unless it meets certain requirements for the types of equipment right. and, and that and kind of this, thing. This is my question. Uh, the district that Adrian read does not allow any any of that. Any of what? Any load at all it has to be drinkable. I've never seen a standard that said it has to be drinkable. What? The, yeah. the, 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 they, when you get a standard from the Region Water Quality Control Board, from the City of Malibu, from a, for a TMDL, there is a standard in place that you have to meet. It's not some uh, random or hypothetical thing that it has to be drinking water quality. Um, you have to define what the drinking water quality is. And the City of Malibu defines what tertiary treatment is. We exceed that. We have dual disinfection. We have redundancy of system. We have everything in place that would you would need for a Title 22 plant. But this plant, unlike the one I designed for Malibu Lumber, is not a certified Title 22 plant because the Title 22 does not certify this size of equipment. Right. And, and this water body that this drains into is not controlled by, this, by Santa Monica Bay or it's it's a it's a designated special district and, and right that is controlled by the it. Region water quality I live on one of those districts. They test my my stream once a month, have for years, take all the readings. It's a different animal than they're saying that it's Title 22 or anything else. It doesn't it isn't controlled by the regional water board. Okay? It's the ocean. You are correct, and this meets the ocean standards. It exceeds the ocean standards. What you're talking about right now is a creek standard. This will not raise the the way that this is microdosed and the treatment that we're using. There will be no impact on the creek. There will be more impacts on the creek from the uh, animal feces that might be in somebody's backyard that's running into the creek than there ever will be from this. That may be true, but that's not the reality. It's totally true. Yeah, it is probably true, but that's not 100% the percent true. I'm discharged. That's a, that's that's the fact of what's in the list. And, and the, what you're talking area. about is that a creek is a creek is controlled by non-point source discharge, which is discharge from irrigation, from ag, from everything else. We will have no impact on the water running into the creek, which is what you are talking about. Those special districts are for creek quality and for runoff quality the runoff that will be coming from this site and the water that's going to be the groundwater that could in theory recharge a, a diurnal creek which is not a recharging creek it's a, a creek that is actually losing water during non-rain times and even during rain times we will not impact the creek there, there's no physical way 
All I know is what's required on, on the point to special reserve. Uh, okay. So, uh, yeah. uh, now, do, are you, have you studied the, the groundwater situation? Or is that in, a different person? Um, on this site, what do you mean by the, uh, what, what, I, I don't well, know. Here's the, my question. What, what situation? The, the, the readings were made in 2020 after 11 years of drought. The last couple of years, we've had a bunch of rain. And there appears to be, in the staff report, it says groundwater is met at 10 feet and we're building a, a floor at nine and a half feet. Has anybody studied any change in the groundwater since it started raining? In other uh, words, the, on, on the, uh, on the uh, shopping center down downtown uh, uh, La Paz, they said no problem. And then when they went to dig the hole to put the uh, the uh, garage in, they've had to pump out 400,000 gallons a day for weeks after weeks after weeks. So I'm just wondering, has that ever been studied? Uh, we are not the the basement. In this situation, because we are um, close to the septic system, is not designed to have any subdrain. So the groundwater will flow around the basement as it normally would. So the basement in this situation, in this on this project, and the geologist can correct me if I'm wrong, mm. is is designed so that the um, there are no back drains, which is what we have to do when we can't meet the the um, 15 feet to the back drains for the basements. Okay. So there is no pumping. I, I, I don't understand. No, I'm not. I'm not worried about pumping. I'm worried about flooding. Uh, Mr. Mr. Ford is is here. If you want to speak with him. Okay, I'd like to ask him that same question. Mr. Ford. Now, can you remind me of what his? What was the question? The question is, the. The uh, groundwater was established at 10 feet in 2020. And then, which was after 10 or so years of drought. Has anybody studied the groundwater? I'm Wait. not an expert in that field. I know I did not. I'm sorry, what? I am not an expert in that field. Okay, I did not thank study you. study groundwater. Okay. Mr. Ford is a biologist. Oh. I got a direct. Right. Does anybody have an answer to that. Adrian, do you know? The question is whether uh, the the site has been recently studied for groundwater uh, level. Yeah, we're being, that, we're that being told question? we're being told that don't worry, we're only going down nine and a half feet and the groundwater is at 10. Now that was done during a drought. I'm just wondering, is it now eight feet? What, what page did you read? It was at 10 feet, Vice Chair. What? What page did you read? It was on. Oh, was I can go read the thing again, but it's in here. Okay. You want to... It's probably not at 10 feet. I can't even imagine that area being at 10 feet. What do you think it is? Lower or higher? It's got to be a lot lower. Why? It's on a river. A river now. Now we're <laughs> well, You've got to realize. Okay, let me ask Adrian a question. Adrian. <laughs> Is this, is this, quote, stream, does it drain approximately five miles of uh, canyon, including a very large um, drain underneath the highway? Yeah, I don't, I don't really answer that question. I didn't uh, look at the hydrology. Um, all, all we know is that uh, the water is collected from the canyons on the northern uh, side of PCH, and it goes under PCH and then release uh, uh, off an uh, outlet uh, on the northern side, uh, and then um, it goes down. But yes, there, there is, you know, as uh, Commissioner Hill mentioned, there's currently uh, water running on that on that creek. Okay, and the canyon and, goes up a long way. Yeah, and so. We are theoretically measuring from the creek, not from bed and bank, which is normal. 
and not from riparian habitat, which is normal. Um, so when you look at uh, any of the major Murray Canyon or any of the major canyons that go across the highway and up the hills, Latigo Canyon, et cetera, creeks get very large when it rains. They're not like your backyard one one footer. The, the one behind my house goes from one foot to 25 feet when it rains. So I'm wondering why we aren't using bed and bank instead of middle of stream. So there are two separate requirements, mm -hmm. uh, two separate variances that are being requested as part of this project. One of the variants is the septic system component and its setback from the stream. Um, there's no, there's not much um, in terms of direction or or requirement um, when it comes to those dimensions, other than in the uh, LCP, it says that uh, septic system components are required to maintain a 100 foot setback from a creek. And so we have uh, traditionally used the flow line for that uh, to do that measurement. That is different from what we do for ESHA impacts. Uh, for ESHA impacts, uh, we, we first look at the flow line, uh, if there is a, 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 a bed and bank, we then use that. Uh, if there is riparian, we then use that. And whichever, you know, expense further out is where um, the uh, setback is taken from uh, for any uh, development. And so, um, you know, the, the dimensions for that are provided uh, in the original staff report. Uh, and we we apply we apply both criteria, uh, and like I said, there's variances uh, requested for for each one. So, uh, can we put up uh, the first slide Don put up on his last presentation? <clears throat> Is that possible? Sorry, do you mean the very beginning of his presentation? No, no, the, the last the last when he came back and rebutted. Uh, after break, Alex. After other comments. I think it starts with the slides. Says, Thank you. Yeah. There you go. Well, the first slide that's Thank okay. You. Now you can see the riparian habitat. Those trees are hanging. You don't see a river, do you? You see a riparian habitat. You don't see a stream anywhere. I see one on your left hand side. What? Yeah, I see it down there close to those houses. Where where the house where the green square is, the repairing house. What's your argument, John? The, uh, the red block the red block where the house under under uh with the green line around it. Okay. You can see that that there's a riparian habitat coming all the way up to the green line, which is the edge of the house. And that riparian habitat goes all the way up to the drainage underneath the highway. Um, in fact, when the house was approved at the end up by the highway, they had to set back because of butterfly restrictions as part of the riparian habitat. It's a butterfly nesting area. So is this. It's the same stream. It's six lots down. Uh, so your argument you know, that, I, that, I'm wondering... Is your argument that... My argument is we're not doing the measurement from the right place. We're doing it from the stream instead of the riparian habitat. And that makes a huge, way. huge difference. Huge difference. It, either way, you still require the variance. Right, but you don't say, gee, it's 45 feet away when it's 20. Uh, and those are made up numbers, but they're about right. And you require the variance from the edge of the riparian habitat, not from the, the stream. It's a huge difference. 
this is a wooded area and it's a butterfly habitat and it's a huge drainage. Yeah, look at the other two houses below it. The other two houses below it were not passed under the at 2002. Yeah, RLCP. Whatever. Okay, well, it's not whatever, it's when, when our LCP was adopted. You can't say, oh, gee, we ignore everything just because something existed before. Nobody's suggesting ignoring anything. Okay. Well, uh, I thought I just heard that. The whatever appears to me to be whatever. That's the way I define it. So I'm wondering how we came to the fact that all these setbacks are determined by a blue line of a stream that gets much larger, drains a much bigger area, and and uh, drains directly into the ocean two houses down. Okay, I'll let somebody else talk. I can wow. dive in here, unless you want to go. Jeff, you have something to say? Yeah, uh, Adrian. Um, the Miss Better came before us before you, you recommended approval, and this time it comes in your recommending not approval, denial. Um, and the difference between then and now is something you discovered, right? Correct. What did you discover? So um, what was discovered is the, again, applicant provided information uh, as form of response to the Planning Commission's request. And in that, uh, they provided a statement um, that um, uh, states that they can relocate the house, uh, you know, at least five feet away uh, from from the stream, and so provided that the house can move five foot further away from the stream, um, we, uh, you know, staff's position is that is that that would be a a lesser of the you know a lesser of an impact, as uh, our position is that. The LIP, uh, you know, quantifies uh, yeah, impact in terms of the setback to the stream. Excuse me, a setback to riparian habitat or the stream or whatever we decide here. Um, and so uh, the fact that there is a way to design this house in a way that uh, would put the house further away from the stream um, is is more consistent with the code. And uh, that's the reason for staff's uh, change in the recommendation. So you've, you've, uh, you've heard the argument by, presented by Mr. Schmitz and by the consultants that the, and in fact, Mr. Ford's letter, the part that you didn't quote, says that either way, if you move it closer to, you know, further away from the stream, it's gonna have no impact on, on natural resources, right? Or on, protected resources right that, that, that is that part, right? that's that's correct that, that is that, their opinion. that is their opinion again that differs from staff's opinion in that we, and, and who, who who on staff has that opinion that was staff recommendation right so that that came from that is, the planning department has the staff biologist said that mr ford is wrong we're, we're not again we're not disputing uh that Mr. Ford, whether Mr. Ford is right or wrong, he is uh, specifically talking to the point that uh, it is his belief that the development will have no impact on ESHA. It is staff's position that ESHA impacts uh, result from not only development within ESHA, but also placing the development within the ESHA buffer. And so, uh, and, again, and, staff's position and, is and, that the buffer and, and, setback. Excuse me. So it's staff's position that it's it, that without regard to whether there is any actual impact on resources, it's the very fact of being within the buffer that correct. is the impact. Is that right? That's, that's is correct. that the same? Is that the same standard that has have you has the city ever applied that standard before? Yes. For example, the, the matter we heard earlier this evening, uh, where there was impact, uh, where where the, the the attitude was, well, uh, yeah, there's going to be impact uh, on uh, on brush esha, but it's just not going to have much impact, no physical impact. 
but you didn't uh, in that case you were not concerned about the distance you were concerned about actual impacts right well again we're, we're talking about two very different projects um that other project uh was proposing development that had direct impact on esha and and again they they designed it in a way to minimize those impacts uh it, it has always been staff's position that if there is a way to either avoid esha or to site the development as far away from esha then that's the design that staff would support so that's always been staff's uh go ahead oh, go ahead it's always been staff's position there's always been staff's position is to make sure that we site the development as far away from mesh as possible and that's that's uh, so if you, to the lcp so if even if we we posit hypothetically a project which would have no impact at all uh and a a, a say a building of uh a thousand square feet uh your position would be that it would be uh better to have a building of 900 square feet right because it would be less impactful and less intrusion into the protected zone uh, again th this is a very specific project i i, uh, I don't no, 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 know no, i'm not talking adrian, of other projects adrian, without knowing the specifics adrian i'm not talking specific projects here's my problem Mm -hmm. I don't see a limiting factor in the position you've adopted. In other words, it, if you if you carry out this position, if you care, if this if this becomes and and believe me, uh, you know I've been at it a while and I've never seen the staff take this position before. But if you take this position, then everybody ends up with an 800 square foot house because you can always have less intrusion or everybody in Anesha ends up with an 800 square foot house because you can always lessen the amount of intrusion by making the house smaller. And where do you draw the line on that? It's, it, you, there is no, well, I can tell you where you draw the line. You draw the line at the 800 square foot house because that's the, that's the only house that can be built, right? Well, we, we have never gone that far. And so again, we're, we're not, we're not asking them in this particular case to reduce the size of the house in any way, okay? What we've asked them to do is to look at options that would increase that setback. And, you, um, you, and we, were, it, we were not provided- so, let, 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 me change, let me change the subject a little bit to sure. the wastewater treatment system. You, you've asked them to reduce the number of bedrooms from three to two, correct? We've asked them to provide that as an alternative. Yes. And 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 your your even though uh, the uh, the consultants have testified that the wastewater system for the will have no impact on water quality, you've nonetheless asked them to reduce from three bedrooms to two. Correct. For a different reason. Uh, so the the reason What's that the, the reason that we even bring up the three bedroom is because that was one of the things they they mentioned in their letter is that yes the house can be moved five feet further away provided there was one uh, you know the there, there was uh uh less bedrooms uh and so and so the the reason the bedroom was even discussed is because if you eliminate it that reduces the uh, uh, dispersal area, and if the dispersal area is then reduced, then that would allow the house to move, uh, you know, uh, closer into the road. And so, that is just one option of uh, what I believe could be other options um, that would if, what, again move the house closer to the road. What if you reduce it to a one-bedroom house? What if you got rid of another bedroom? Would you be allowed to move it to even further closer to the uh, to the road? Well, I would imagine so, but we we didn't get that information. Yeah. Okay, so I'm I'm about to wrap up, but here's my problem. As, as I said it earlier in the evening, the one thing that I see that we ought to be doing is trying to make the development process predictable. 
And by adopting this approach, you have made it orders of magnitude less predictable than it otherwise would have been. Uh, it's, a, it's an approach which, which somebody needs to take a close look at and uh, hopefully the city council, somebody will take a look at this because this is a, 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 an attitude that's simply going to, um, uh, is going to make the development process essentially impossible because you can always make it smaller. You can always move it further. Uh, they're really, uh, it's, 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 you know, not something I believe should stand. So that's, I'll conclude my questions at that point. Commissioner Hill. Yeah, thank you. Um, I have a number of comments and points, but let me try to follow on that for continuity here. Um, well, let me just first say though, that we, we, you know, we heard this all before we continued it. We gave them some direction on what seemed like might be more workable on this site. And it feels like sort of one step forward, two steps back. Um, they they didn't really take any of that into account. But to, to first to, to address Jeff's consideration right off, yeah, uh, section 4.7 does put strong limits on building in ESHA and it does in effect take you back down to theoretically the 800 square foot house, um, but they do have a 1738 square foot development area, so they should be able to to figure out something plausible within that. Um, one thing that I, I that sort of troubles me is that even though we sent this back and it's come back to it's again, there are a lot of numbers. There are a lot of numbers that there's ver that aren't pinned down yet. Um, one category of numbers are what could we have done on this site that would have made it better? Nobody's done the math to kind of put it all together where the compromise that we, we heard that they could remove a bedroom and that would give us five feet closer to the street, that removing that would also reduce the dispersal area, uh, but we don't know how much, how many feet would that buy? Um, eliminating the basement or reducing the size of the basement could reduce the dispersal area. We It says from 15 feet to eight feet eight feet. Um, so there are various accommodations proposed, but we don't have any numbers on what those would, would really yield. Now, when I look at the, the um, try to get any precedent in this area with respect to this stream, I think that the, that first house up at the top of the road, of course, it's not dispositive, but it is, it is indicative their situation there, they were they had to reduce somewhat because of the the butterfly and the habitat and so forth. They ended up with, I measured 75 feet from the blue line. Adrian reports to me it's 67. Here they're talking 40. Or, I'm sorry, 50 feet uh, only from the from the blue line. They said calling it 40 feet from the creek. I don't even know if that's true because I was out there this week and it looked to me like the bed and bank were a foot or two wider than they were when I saw it just months ago because of the immediate storms. So when we're looking at that, how to treat the creek, that other house is set back, let's call it 67. That's, you know, we're roughly, these guys are asking for roughly 20 feet closer to the creek, and they have just as much of the riparian habitat there as John pointed out. Um, so it, it just seems like they're, you know, it's the proverbial uh, five pounds of whatever in the four pound bag. And um, then I guess finally I should I should comment here. Uh, Fred Gaines is still in the meeting. He he wrote up some thoughts and uh, he's stayed up late. So I'd like to just briefly respectfully address his arguments. He points out number one that the ESHA impacts are entirely speculative, not supported by evidence, but Code doesn't require evidence of actual impact. It's about potential. He says, reciting the house five feet further away from the creek would not provide any ESHA benefit. I agree that only five feet would not be a substantial improvement. Uh, he says, the findings contradict findings and support. Well, facts and circumstances evolve. There's nothing that says they can't do that. He um, says that elimination of the bedroom or the basement would prejudice the applicant and serve no ESHA benefits. Well, we've seen that it could be further from the riparian area and it's not prejudiced given that they don't have a, any sort of absolute right to it in the first place. 
The next house up the street against the creek also had to be substantially reduced in size. Um, so the subject property is mostly within the 100 foot ESHA buffer. Yes, that's not an argument against a smaller size. Uh, there are similar project on, on West Sea Level Drive. There is that one similar project up the street that was required to be reduced. Other houses were built prior to the LCP. We pointed that out. Apparently, there are several pending applications, but we can't treat them as evidence of anything other than the expectation that they could lead and contribute to any potential cumulative impacts. So, and we don't know how much. Um, so, I, I just think, you know, like we said before, they need to dial it back some. They're too close. Can I, can I ask a question? It's it's quarter after eleven. Uh, I don't see a motion getting three votes on either side. Uh, we can. One alternative is to sit here and hang until one of us drops over, and <laughs> then you've got a three to two vote. Um, but um, short of that, has anybody got a path for how we're going to get out of this meeting? Um, I, I, I just we've, we've we've had our hearing, we've 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 allowed the public to testify. Uh, I think at this point we need to continue this item. Uh, Unless somebody's got some idea of how how else we're going to get out of it, I guess that's why we thought we should do it at the very beginning because this is where we know we'd be. So well, I didn't know we'd be here. I'll sit around and hang till somebody drops over. I, you know. <laughs> yeah, I will too. I'll. I, I just want to make one comment, and that is, you talk about predictability, and and this is the best case I've ever seen in Malibu. You had one house built. It went through a long process, got reduced. The planning commission did the best they could to get the guy a house. We allowed lifts and one and two car garages, which are really one, but we were required to protect the butterflies, et cetera. At that time, we had a, a city biologist who actually followed what the code said. And so we had to. So all you had to do is watch that tape. And you, you can predict. So I'm going to make a motion to uh, uh, move staff's recommendation. I'll second it. Call the question. Can I have a roll call, please? Right. Vice Chair Mazza? Yes. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Commissioner Jennings? No. Chair Smith? No. Motion fails. Okay, uh, let's continue the hearing. I, I wonder when uh, uh, biologist Ford has last looked at the stream because his letter is from May 2022. And in my two trips out there, the stream looks substantially different than, I mean, I you know, I didn't have like side-by-side -side photographs to look at, but my sense of it was that it, it, the bed and bank are now wider. And you know, with climate change, et cetera, bigger storms, that's only to be expected. Do, do, can we ask? Has yeah, does I, he, you, you know? It, it, no, I, go I ahead and ask him. I, it, it, go ahead. I'm sorry. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to you know find something to break the log jam. Mr. Ford. Somebody has to unmute him. There you, there you go. Go ahead. Yeah, I haven't been out since after the rains. All right. Thank you. But a lot of the um, water that's actually fed into that is comes off a of PCH as well. True. And not all the ha not all that habitat is actually native habitat. A lot of it's non-native as well. Well, that's true of all of Malibu, but we have a lot of Esha so just. To describe everywhere, but you know, nothing. Nothing is pure. Uh, thank God you. Damn. Um, I I would then move that we continue, uh, and that something that we would need the next time is something more concrete to look at in terms of 
the various uh, sort of fudge factors and muddles and, and compromises and that have been proposed on the table, but there's nothing showing what they would add up to. And, you know, do they, do they complement each other? Do they overlap? So this five feet and that five feet only add up to five feet total, or do they, you know, do you know what I mean? It's like, it's hard to say how much shifting and accommodating is that going to get us, you know, five feet in the end or 30 feet? I don't know. I'd, or, also, like to, uh, I'd also like to have uh, somebody here who could re explain the outfall requirements into the ocean and how you can't use purple pipe, et cetera. Somebody that knows the actual law. Purple pipe. Well, yeah, I, 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with that. I here, here's my problem is that that you know we've gone through this many times, but but when we have expert testimony uh, on a particular issue, um, it, it, it what you need in order to counter it is counter expert testimony. It's not enough to talk about well, what could happen and speculate and, and so on. It's That's not substantial evidence. And so if there is going to be an argument about whether, in fact, uh, the the moving the property back would 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 have any actual impact on on resources, I think that that's incumbent upon staff to bring forward uh, some sort of expertise from staff uh, to say no, that's that's it is going to have a positive impact. Or similarly, with regard to this wastewater treatment system, it says it's going to have no impact. I want to hear an expert say that yeah, there is going to be an impact. Uh, I, I I am definitely unwilling to buy the argument that that just the very existence within a uh, within a zone is in fact an impact. Uh, so those are things I'd like to see. And, and maybe um, there was talk about doing a more updated um, groundwater level assessment. Maybe maybe we need that. Yeah, we also need somebody who will evaluate the riparian habitat and the setbacks. Well, we and there again, that's sort of where I was going on, John. The, the the applicant says we're not touching riparian habitat. So I'm if you're, talking if about touching it. I'm talking about measuring from it, yeah. which apparently was not done. And they, they are they are within the drip line there but we are any house is going to be within that setback requirement anything on this property is going to be within that setback from riparian habitat but so we have to make where a decision you on how far we give the variance and if we don't know where to start we can't give a variance we need to know that right. the delineation of the riparian habitat so let's go with uh, Commissioner Hill's suggestion. We should continue, and that's a pretty simple thing to do, I believe. Am I not correct? Yeah, I think so. With yes. some direction, when, when, with some direction about some of the things we want to see next time to be able to better evaluate it. I think right? you just did. I think Commissioner Jennings just did. I think you did. Okay, our, and, and we're incorporating that into my motion. I, I believe we should. Yes, I, I believe you and Commissioner Jennings both want to see. If if uh, A.D. Fernandez is saying the reasons he's denying it, then then they should bring those people to show why they're denying it. Well, also, I think the applicant has to show why his experts, some of which who apparently don't know some of the rules, uh, <laughs> needs a backup. I, I don't know who that is, but. They're, they're they're, 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 they already have their consultants. It's up to staff to bring theirs in. We so don't have a consultant who knows about groundwater. Not one here today. That that's true. I, I'm sorry. That's, how does how, how how does groundwater come into it? Because you're I mean, going where, down uh, to the groundwater. You're building in, in a uh, you're building a bathtub, just like they did in La Paz. Yeah. There, is there a is there a is there a standard or something that we that's in the LIP that we should be looking at in terms of groundwater? I'm I'm just missing something here well they also said that uh, i think john quoted it as that, that it was 10 feet down and they're building nine and a half feet down um but that the circumstances have changed because that was uh un, un, I, unusual I, I, I didn't see that number anywhere but that's fine we can get someone to to drill down and do a do a test and or have have mr schmitz get someone 
to to do that, and then you'll have your answer, uh, Vice Chair. Uh, look, wait, should, we can have them test a million things, but it's only if, if it's relevant to the outcome. I mean, I don't understand. I, I would think that groundwater issues would be a building and safety issue, not a, not a planning issue. Am I wrong, Adrian? Well, just one thing to add, and, and obviously everyone's concerns are, are very valid. There is something to be said for the applicant has the right to make whatever case they want. They have heard the concerns by Vice Chair Mazza. They have heard the concerns by, by, by Commissioner Hill. I believe they are you know, sophisticated and intelligent enough to weigh those concerns and then weigh the pros and cons of responding to them, kind of how they, they deem fit. I would, I would be a bit hesitant to condition a continuance saying, you must do X, Y, and Z as the, as the applicant. Rather, they, they, they've heard the concerns, it's, it, it, is, it is incumbent on them to either address uh, them. I, I, want to make I, I beg to differ. I beg to differ. They had their bite at the apple. We gave them a series of, of thoughts about how to moderate this, and they ignored them. So I think we do need to, to, to say, put, put the numbers together. See, see what, what you could right. actually do that would be a little bit better. Right. I'm not, I'm not saying that, that that will be good or bad for their project. I am saying they, they are free to make whatever case they want. And if that falls short, then this body can 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 react accordingly. Okay, I just want to we're asking them, the only thing we're asking for is a geologist to do some drilling for if whatever reason for groundwater, which isn't there. But if there's going to be something in the in the spirit of getting along here at eleven thirty at night, I guess we can get somebody to dig a hole. Yeah, well, it's a lot more than digging a hole. I mean, there's a lot of things that were brought up tonight that weren't answered. For example. The fill over the over the uh, natural grade and where how deep you dig for an ar archaeologist, et cetera. There's a lot of things. What I would like to do is end up with the, the ability to have a hearing. And we have all this discussion in the city about how every every project takes forever. And I want to have a hearing where we can pass or deny without encouraging a being reasonable and without encouraging an appeal tonight, if we have voted this yes, I would bet dollars to donuts that it's appealed. Okay. And there were several things that were contemplated that wouldn't cut it with coastal. So it, it doesn't do us any good to have houses go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Um, and the city council is considering having no appeal fee. Okay. That means everything we do has got to be perfect. So we better start getting down to the fact mm -hmm. what we don't forget to do studies that are required. And we we have common ways to do things. We don't have every neighborhood standard just on what that architect wants or character. Uh it's it's <clears> standard. <throat> and okay, it's eleven thirty, John. We can process things. We got it. So I think they have it too. I think we should go on a continuance. Everybody needs to come loaded with bear next time with all the people. They either staff gets the people that shows that it's that it's not that it is affecting everything, and the applicant will bring the other people that didn't come tonight so they can have their turn at it. I think it's that simple, you, and that's what will happen. I, I need. Did, I need us, did we get a date? Did we get a date? Um, we have not heard a date. Uh, well, we earlier earlier in this meeting, we discussed the potential of a date of, April I believe, 3rd. April 3rd. Um, and I would also like a little clarification on what the motion stands at at this point. Well, I've, I've made a motion that nobody's accepted so far, or maybe John did, but I, I, I want some uh definite consideration of what the things we've talked about tonight i don't want to i don't want to just say yeah just go and bring us something back i we've done that i think we need to give them more uh pre precise direction that says we talked about a bunch of stuff tonight we want you to expressly address that stuff they will they can if they forgot they can turn around and watch the meeting over 14 times Okay, but right so now i believe that these people will bring back who they are however it's up to staff to bring their side. And I'm not going to condition staff to do that. That's up to them. And it's really up to the applicant, Commissioner Hill. I think they'll do it. And I think okay. hopefully staff will do it. Well, just uh, continue. It's a real simple situation. The we'll come question back. is, will they be ready 
on April 3rd. It's up to them to be ready on April 3rd, Commissioner or Vice okay. Chair. You're right. Typically, we them. ask them. No, okay. no, come on. It, 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 if you don't want to ask you them, know, you can second the motion April 3rd. If they don't come back with the right information, Mr. April 3rd. Mr. Schmitz has his hand up. Hang on. Go ahead, Mr. Schmitz. We will be prepared on April 3rd to answer each and every uh, uh, concern that has been raised in the commission's deliberations, and we will have every expert uh, necessary uh, to address those concerns as well. There you go. That okay. sounds like a lullaby. Okay, I second the motion. Okay, so the motion stands as uh, just a motion to continue the item to April 3rd, 2023. Correct. Okay, thank you. So roll call, please. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Vice Chair Mazza? Yes. Commissioner Jennings? Yes. Chair Smith? Yes. Motion carries. I move we adjourn. Second that motion. Second. See ya. Can I take a vote? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Vice Chair Mazza? Yes. Chair Smith? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Jennings? Yes. Commissioner Hill? Yes. Motion carries. You are adjourned. All right. Good night, everybody.